If this were the Mullets World Championship, there would only be one winner. But as it happens, Cam Smith is also one of the greatest golfers on the planet. In his debut event in Boston two weeks ago, Smith pushed our eventual winner, Dustin Johnson, to the very end. Now in Chicago, the Aussie leads the way, heading into the third and final day. And you can bet that winning in the second city is the first thing on his mind. The solo challenge of golf. Being alone in your own head. Even for the best in the world, must be mad. It's just you. You versus the ball. You versus the course. Not quite good enough. You win, good for you. That's what you're supposed to do. You lose, look in the mirror, cause that's on you. So close. But the idea of team play in golf, now that's a game changer. Absolutely phenomenal. Take it from me, being on a team can be pretty rewarding. It's not just you, it's everyone pulling together towards the same goal. And look at the response from his teammates. DJ is not bearing from long range to build his own legacy. It's bigger than that. You're living for your teammates. Live the golf winner. This weekend, the best teams in golf are in my town, Chicago. Home of the greatest dynasty in sports. Is there a new dynasty in golf? I know one thing. Everyone's coming for the champs in Chicago. Just the way I like it. Chicago is home to some of American sports' most memorable teams. Michael and Scotty's Bulls, Mike Ditka's 85 Bears, and the 2016 Cubbies who lifted the curse. Today, it's Live Golf's turn to crown a Windy City winner. Cam Smith is the reigning Open champion. Today, the world number three will have to hold off Dustin Johnson, who suddenly appeared human yesterday. But Live Golf is about the teams as well. DJ's four aces hold the slight edge, but Smash, Stinger, and Cam's punch will all come out swinging. It promises to be a rousing final round with big two titles on the line. Hello, everybody. Welcome inside the Live Golf studio on the 18th here at Rich Harvest Farms. I'm Arlo White, and what a day of sporting theatre we have for you today just outside of Chicago. Dustin Johnson and Cam Smith are going head-to-head. -head. Let's check the tail of the tape. So far, 63 and 73 for DJ, who was world number one for 135 weeks. 66 and then a 68 yesterday for Cam Smith, the reigning Open champion. This is going to be fascinating. We can't wait, chaps. Jerry Foltz and David Fairty alongside me as per usual. Is it just about those two, David? Or could a winner come from somewhere else? Uh, I think it can definitely come from somewhere else. But Dustin Johnson, as you said, looked human yesterday. He doesn't like that. Um, I think there are maybe six or eight guys that can win. Uh, and the guy that really impressed me yesterday, Jerry, was Peter Uline. I've never seen him swing the club like that. He's completely in control of his, his, his ball, no question. Yeah, well, he's had a, a lifetime, a career, a nice career, but a lifetime of promise that he hasn't really overachieved in his career, and maybe this is his breakthrough victory. Coming from behind, I like Bryson DeChambeau's yeah. chances if he just makes a couple putts two days without it. But to me, today is all about the teams. We have a thrilling uh, fight for the individual title, but the teams are so stacked up, and the teams are so stacked in depth. Yeah. It's going to end with three scores counting, so volatile. This is all about the teams. Today. And they can all change so quickly. But day one was about Dustin Johnson. Day two, Cam came roaring back. 
The crowds are flocking in. The question is, can anybody stop Dustin Johnson? Day two has dawned, and we're about to find out. This is a special one right here, David. Yeah, this guy is just magic with the putter. Oh, roller in. Right in the middle for Cam Smith. Oh, yikes. What is Dustin up to here? Just the touch of a surgeon. What a putt. Oh. <laughs> what a putt from Cameron Smith. It's just a gift. What a shot from a difficult lie. Pretty good. Not just a face though, pretty good. Cameron Smith to within a shot of our leader. A dart from Cameron Smith. Cam Smith about to deliver the knockout punch. Ten under par. It was tricky out there today, and I think, you know, I think I got a couple of breaks and, and DJ didn't quite make the putts that he usually does, you know, so it's gonna be tight and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Nine minutes to go until our shotgun start. All 48 players will be out on the golf course simultaneously. That's our leaderboard heading into the final day. Cameron Smith, a two-stroke lead over Dustin Johnson. As David mentioned, Peter Uline had a terrific day yesterday. He's seven under. Schwartzel, Cantor are in the mix. Bryson, DeChambeau as well. Now, the team contest, as Jerry mentioned, is alive as well. Brooks Kepka's smash are seeking a first podium finishing live golf. Let's eavesdrop on their team meeting a little earlier this morning. Who is having the best round of the day so far? The answer is Peter Uline. He's six under par today. He's really helping out Team Smash. He's seven under overall. Do your thing. Yep. Play well. Go. Play well. Hey, Vanilla. Let's go, boys. <laughs> no, you already know what to do. Yeah. Run the ball. Ben, we've Run all been ball. here before. Let's go. Run the ball. Hey, Vanilla. Do your thing, man. So can Team Smash do it? Well, they're only two strokes off the lead held by the four aces who are attempting to four-peat here at Rich Harvest Farms. They are yet to be beaten on US soil, but it can all change very quickly indeed. Now, Troy Mullins is on the practice tee. The two counting scores for the four aces yesterday were from Messrs. Reed and Perez. Round three of Chicago. The fans are obviously ready for an incredible event. Let's just say the team the team chase is going to be interesting. Smash GC, if they have the same performance as they did yesterday, they could be 12 under as a group. But I'm coming in with the four aces. Pat, Patrick, uh, tell me, does your mentality or strategy change going into round three knowing your score counts today or could count? No, you know, um, really just kind of build off what I did yesterday. And really, this golf course, it seems like you get to play from the fairway. And uh, I didn't do that in round one and hit a couple more fairways yesterday. so. Yeah, as long as we hit the ball in the fairway and hit some greens, you know, the putter feels great and just leave it up to the putter. But, uh, you know, the only time that strategy would change is come later on the round, seeing where we stand. All right. Well, hopefully that putter works for you. And I'm going to come into another player. Hey, Pat Perez, how you doing? I'm doing great. So do you feel any added pressure knowing that you're chasing a fourth team win? Yeah, I've got pressure every shot out here. I can't beat these guys as it is, so I got to try to count. I got to make something happen today. Well, we hope to see you out there. We know you count. You do count. You matter. Uh, well, good luck to the four aces and all the teams out here. Troy, thanks very much. Pat Perez is in the zone. I'll tell you who else is in the zone, chaps. David Fair hits his nemesis, Alf, yeah. mm. who is about to lift off. David, swat away. Go off. Go off. Go off. Leave us. Leave us out. Go and find Don Belay somewhere on the 18th. He's that uh, had a little training accident in rehearsal. Alf did. It was recovered well. One of the better mm. moments of the day. There's Dom. The 18th is the easiest hole on the golf course. Seven eagles were recorded yesterday. Imagine someone made an eagle to win today. How exciting that will be. However, to make an eagle, you've got to hit the fairway. You've got to hit the fairway right there. If you're in the rough, you're not going to hold this green. It's small. It's downwind. And it's a tiny, tiny target. Now, the pin today is back left. If you're on the fairway, you've got a seven, eight iron in. Ideally, you want to leave it short right. Leave yourself an uphill putt. However, you'll take an eagle putt from anywhere. If someone wins with an eagle today, the roar will be huge because the crowd is enormous today. Over to you, Bubba. Hey, DJ. So um, Jerry Foltz is wanting to know. It's three wins in a row. You have a chance for four. Are you eating the same breakfast, same lunch every day? Um, uh, yeah, I do that pretty much anyways, but yeah, I try to keep everything 
you know, simple. But yeah, I usually eat the same kind of food, do the same things every morning, just because obviously, you know, with golf, you always want to try to feel the same every day if you can. And so I try to stick to it. All right, perfect, man. Have a good day, man. Play well. Thanks, Bubba. A DJ, we all have our morning routines. Jerry, you're just getting used to mine, aren't you? Here are the score worms for the opening two days. I still want Dustin to answer that. Uh, fish, <laughs> it was a fishing pole or wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chap, talk us through the progress of these two players over the two days. Well, you, uh, you see that Dustin Johnson basically skyrocketed to the top and then leveled out yesterday, as we saw with the one over par 73 and, and Cam Smith doing what he does, clawing his way up, David. Yeah, you know, Cam definitely the more consistent of the two, but you know, Dustin, as we say, you know, he did not like yesterday. I would expect him to score low today. Is it Cam Smith's day? Let's find out how he's feeling. He's with Sue Ann Hang. Yes, I am with our clubhouse leader and our mullet champion as well, Cam Smith. Uh, Cam, you're obviously in the running for the individual competition, but how much of the team competition is going to be weighing on your mind today? Yeah, I think uh, I think the boys are pumped up. I think we're ready to go. This is, uh, you know, as this course gets firmer and faster and, and windier, it reminds us a lot of home. So uh, hopefully we go out there and, and do the right thing by Australia and, and show them up. Well, I saw you and DJ having a little walk and talk coming down the chipping green. Was there any trash talking? No. <laughs> no, me and DJ are harmless. <laughs> we're, uh, I, I don't even know what we we're talking about, to be honest. Uh, I don't know. Oh, well, uh, one more question. Finally, you cut Greg's hair yesterday. Mm -hmm. How nervous were you? Yeah, that was probably the most nervous I've been for a long time. Um, I mean, I, I didn't want to stuff it up. You know, uh, the shark being one of my idols growing up, the last thing I wanted to do was um, mess up his hair. So I left it to the pros after one quick snip. Well, I thought you were being very kind, sticking to, you know, level two, not going to level one. But anyways, play well today. Good luck. Well, by the way, um, Live to Give are giving $1,000 for every mullet that is, that is shaved uh, on the course in the fan village. Greg Norman had his done yesterday. Over $90,000 has been raised for, for good causes. It, it's really interesting what Cam says there because they're, they're competitive, Dustin and Cam, obviously because they're, they're two of the greatest players in the world. They're not necessarily combative personalities, are they, out there? No, they're not. Uh, I think a, a good description was they're harmless. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the mullet, uh, to be fair, is an easy haircut to repair. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at, uh, at Cam cutting. Uh, well, he, he had the first little snip yesterday. Greg looks a little nervous there. That is not a, a genuine happy smile out of Greg. Mm, That's no. I'm a little scared here. Uh, Greg That's getting hilarious. involved, of course. <laughs> Um, the conditions yesterday, it was a little breezy. The scoring wasn't as low as we saw the previous day. What's it like out there as See, two former pros Seems today? to me in our little look at it to, uh, that it's actually going to be even tougher than yesterday. I don't think. We'll, we'll know shortly how much water they put on the greens, if any. Yeah. But those greens were getting firm and crusty yesterday. It's firmed up, and uh, there is some rain forecast. Let's keep our fingers crossed we don't see that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That should be a little later on. We're just over a minute and a half to go until our shotgun start. Look at the crowds flocking in again. I didn't know if they were going to be as big today because yeah, obviously Bears play tonight. Bears and, tonight. Uh, and, the, and it didn't seem as though the parking lot was so busy when we drove in, but evidently they just arrived a little late because it's every bit as big as yesterday. Yeah, Bears Packers is Sunday night football later on, so plenty of time to catch a bit of golf, top-level golf here at Rich Harvest Farms, and then take in the Bears later on. Now this is, you alluded to it earlier, this was rehearsal. Get this, TV gold. You weren't <laughs> supposed to actually hit it david well i i penetrated its defenses fairly easily i'll have to say you know i mean it was uh it was fairly easy to bring down but well, robust mm, you know and yes. its construction yes fortunately there was, there was no audio to that because that was actually the best part his reaction to killing out everybody was smiling laughing except alf's father who yeah. uh, was resuscitating yeah. the poor thing on the floor we are getting ready for action here on day three Third and final day here of our fifth event, the Live Golf Invitational Chicago. Yeah, remember today's the only day that two groups will tee off of the same tee, that being number one, the two leading groups, uh, the six lowest scores starting the day. It's golf, but louder, as you can tell. Let's listen in. Uh, 
that's still the coolest part of every show to me. Matt Jones is on the tier two. He plays for Punch, the All Aussie team, or in the hunt, and he's in the hunt as well, individually. Big tee shot here, David. Get this in the fairway. It's a pretty easy hole. He yeah. took a nice smooth swing at that. Yeah, reachable par five, a low. Hey, uh, nope. Yeah, it could be a decision right there. Yeah. Lee Westwood next. Now, if Lee can replicate his final round in Boston a few weeks ago, he could be in the hunt as well. He was on course for a 60 at one stage, just blew it up in the closing three holes, but did go around in 62, one shot off the eventual playoff. Lee's Majestics currently tied for fourth place on 11 under par, two behind third place smash. The Majestics are level with Stinger for fourth. Here's Charles Schwartzel on the tee at the fourth. Just fairway wood for Charles. Bryson now, his first shot of the day. Yeah. Uh, just a fairway wood off the tee and a small one at that. He feels he can reach easily. And he's right. But what did he reach 18 with? Iron, iron wedge yesterday Yeah. on 18. Sergio, seven back, individual lead. Not un, un, impossible, but highly unlikely. Fourth dog leg left. Got to put it in the fairway here. Short hole. A good birdie chance. Brandon Grace at the par 3 16th. Well, he's starting on the two hardest holes on the course. So whatever he does after this, he's going to have the easier finish than most players. That are near the lead. Turk Pettit on the tee at the par three, 13. Catch the slope and get a little closer. Matthew Wolf is on the tee at three. Only breaks he got in round two were bad breaks, and he's still four under. Yeah. Wasn't a happy camper yesterday, was he? But the Wolf Pack are back following him today. Something good happens early. It's game on for Matt Wolf, Matthew Wolf. His high flyers captain, Phil Mickelson, on the tee at eight. Right. So far. DJ, Cam Smith, Peter Uline tee off in about 10 minutes on the first hole. Increases our chances of getting, getting a winner on the 18th hole in front of the majority of the crowd, but you never know in this format. It could come from anywhere on the course. Jason Kokrak is on the tee at five. Flag on the front right here, just over the water. See a lot of golf balls finishing there just to be safe. To the tee at three, Louis Oosthuizen, captain of the all South African Stinger. And they're starting the day just four back with three scores counting. Pretty deep team. That could change in a hurry. Oh, the lovely kick to start off with. He was a little worried about that one in the air. Brooks Kepka. On the tee at the sixth. In team colors. Yeah. The black and white of Smash. Just not firing on all cylinders recently, Brooks. Let's see a recovery shot from there. 
What about the captain of Talk Golf Club? Joaquin Neiman made the individual playoff in Boston. Eight back of the lead uh, of the team competition. Unlikely, but we've seen some serious highlights out of this young man. By the way, it's Chilean Independence Day today, so Joaquin and uh, his countrymen and women are all celebrating today. Happy 18th to all. Thank you, David. Yeah, that's the extent of my Spanish. I can order two beers in about 17 languages, but that's it. <laughs> I knew I liked hanging out with you. Matthew Wolf for birdie to get things going on the third hole. It was Bedminster on the final day where he really caught fire, and he almost got the high flies onto the podium, didn't yeah. he? And that brought Phil Mickelson back into the action because Phil realised on the final day, though he was out of it in the individual competition, that he you know could I mean? contribute to perhaps getting his team onto yeah. the podium. They Stop narrowly the missed out in the end. Charles Howells found the left yeah. rough at the first. One, huh? Yeah, starting at just inside the one, yep. Good lie. Shouldn't be a problem. Same wind direction as yesterday. Into him and from the left. Uncomfortable for a right-handed golfer of any skill level. Huh. It's going to be eventful. Coming Sue Ann Heng on the second hole following Lee Westwood here. Yeah, it's just coming out of the right hand rough. Wind is blowing pretty strong from his right. Why well, looks all right. Definitely don't want to be long here. Saw so him hitting on the range. He was just striping it. Yeah, it continues to do so. What a shot from Lee Westwood. And he lines that for Eagle. Is that any good? Out of the rough. Yeah, Let's stay for Matt Jones, Suan. Matt's got an awkward lie. Although this is not a terrible angle, he really. Drove, drove this dangerously close, close to the water. You think he's got some adrenaline running through his veins right now? I think so. Jumper there. Didn't expect it to come out that quick, obviously. His first two scores counted. Matt Jones for punch, who are in second place, a stroke behind the four aces in the team competition. Lori Canter, second shot at one. These are somewhat uncharted waters. Lori. Played beautifully yesterday. The first to play at two was Bryson DeChambeau. Dichambeau, but we're going to join Oosthuizen for birdie at three. Oh. 30 chances like that aren't going to be as a plenty today as they have been. Well, they were in round one. This is Kokrak. Team smash. They need him to throw another good one up today. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. That's a quick one from there. Whew. Neiman second. That's Carlos Ortiz. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. David gave it a double take, so I knew. <laughs> what a beauty. Yeah. This is Joaquim Neiman over at the third. Lovely tee shot. Yeah. And he takes advantage of that. Well, if DJ and Cameron are fearless or uh, harmless, Joaquin Neiman is fearless. He doesn't mind chasing big names. Well, it's an NFL Sunday, and we have mentioned that the Bears don't play until this evening, but the crowds have flocked here to Rich Harvest Farms. Paul Casey, the fairway, number nine. The 
always popular Pat Perez. And we're at the 11th par five, his third shot. It's a bite. One. Charles Hall from miles away. Yeah, it was interesting what he said yesterday in his interview. I don't look at the individual leaderboard oh. even while I'm out there. Wow, what a putt. Just the team. Oh, uh, thank you. Same with Pat Perez as well. Welcome to the final round of Live Golf Chicago. First on the tee from Smash GC, Peter Uline. Best round of the day yesterday of all 48 players, six on the par for Peter Uline. It's great news for Smash. And he's got himself into our lead group. And he looked very, very relaxed yesterday. Did that one go a little right. Oh. He hangs up. That could be nasty. Here's his uh, teammate, Kokrak. For his par at five, slides by. And just like that, counting three scores, Smash has already dropped a shot to par. Four aces captain, Dustin Johnson. Our winner in Boston a couple of weeks ago in second, as it stands on I pylon going into day three here, just outside of Chicago. I think he gets first tee jitters, Dave, ever? No. He's just... Flat can, comatose. <laughs> That's a beauty to start. Mm -hmm. Look at the first hole. It's a very slight dog leg to the to the right. And some thick rough down the right hand side here. And the penalty area stream that runs over this really not in play for these guys unless you find yourself with a particularly bad lie. That was a pre-swatted Alf providing the uh, pitches yes. there. Smith choosing to lay up a little farther back. Don't blink, everybody. This is Charles Schwartzel of Stinger. No, he doesn't, does he? No. Surely not. Start of the day, six under, so I guess he did. Yep, seven under par for Schwartzel. He was our inaugural winner in London in early June, and he's got a big smile on his face early on here in Chicago. Oh, Wade Ormsby, a little energetic there for the Australian. And Carlos Ortiz for birdie at 17. Oh, hardest hole of the week thus far. Westwood for birdie at two. This is going to be big for Team Majestics. Needs to make a move left to right uphill. Actually, that was for Eagle. That Sorry. For Eagle. Oh, yeah. Bit of a shame. That was a fantastic second shot. Yeah, it sure was. Sam Horsfield for birdie at the eighth. Rattles that one in. Arlo mentioned yesterday how consistent he has played. Yesterday, not actually, I think it was his worst round. Yeah, of uh, live golf competition. But solid, solid player. Well, his countryman, Glory Cantor, had a fantastic day yesterday. This for birdie at one, and he's seven under par. Three strokes off the outright lead. He was rather self-deprecating in his post-round interview yesterday. He was in awe of Bryson DeChambeau, mm -hmm. who he played with, but Laurie's there or thereabouts. Bryson will do that to you. 
<laughs> make you realize, like Steve Harvey said, make you realize, in Steve Harvey's words, how far he is away from being good. Uh, Bryson makes you realize how mortal you are hitting a golf ball. Great shot there for Ormsby. Former captain Wayne Ormsby talking to his successor, Cam Smith, captain's chap. So he must be vice captain, That's honorary my, vice captain. Yeah. My favorite position he's in right there. <laughs> Punch chasing the team title. Get around us, says Wade. So um, imagine it being rather late on a Sunday evening down under. I'm sure there are lots of people across Australasia cheering on Team Punch today. It's hard to injure yourself on a couch or a lazy boy, isn't it, David? Not yeah. impossible. Yeah. yeah. Neiman. Big hickory in front of him there, not in the way. Not for him. He can turn it around it. Oh, with that draw, maybe could have done it with one less club. Well, Taylor Gooch has slipped down the pylon individually, but he could have a big day today. And the four races have had a good start. That was for birdie at 10 for Gooch. Pat Perez, he was in the zone talking to Troy on the practice tee earlier. That was for birdie at 11. So all of a sudden, and he can change quickly, the four races 17 under, a four-stroke lead over punch. Ooh, Paul Casey just snivels one in there. <laughs> Over. That's some thick stuff there for Peter Uline. It's not the start he wanted. Basically kind of landing it. Yeah, what is it? Yeah. Just right in here. Yeah, what is it like at the one? Like if I hit it at the one and it goes through. Right there. I mean, that's, that's right here. So that's 28 on. So that's 147. 47. Yeah, right at the one to the fringe. Yeah. So we're kind of landing it. I mean, one, 140 to 143 is pretty good. Yeah. It's in off left. Yeah. Wind's not good. Kind of jump a little bit. Yeah. A bit more off the left. Thing. Yeah. So if we're pitching 143, it's playing 40. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, David. Not the tee shot he's looking for, and there's a horrible, like, grass growing in all sorts of directions. I can see the club twisting here at impact, closing. And it's done just that. Okay. Heavy? That'll be an awkward enough bunker shot. Not a whole lot of great to work with. Conditions not easy out here. Pretty similar to yesterday. Pretty similar strength wind. Just depends how firm these greens are, how much dryness are in them. Nine iron for Cam Smith. From what we've seen so far, they are a little firmer. You need to do what he's just done. Hit fairways then. Oh, a nice little low puncher. This looks really good. Doesn't Pretty grab, fun. just goes into the edge of that semi-rough there. It's a lovely swing. DJ's got a shot. He's got 40 on, so he's got uh, about 135 yards. A little crosswind. Feels a little in at some point. I'm going to go let's try to hit a lower, try to skip it back there, especially after seeing that ball bounce. Yeah, Wind switched. Uh, not much room to work right there either. Just like that, uh, Team Smash has lost four shots to the four aces, and we just came on the air. Matt Jones on the tee at three. Yeah, he's not happy coming with that bogey on two. 
easy as hole out here, but that was a fantastic shot. Seven iron. Up to Stinson. T at five. Had a couple friends follow him around the course uh, yesterday, actually working with us, volunteering as spiders, and they said, didn't realize how big he was. He's a strong man, David. Yeah. Oh. That's a beauty back right there. Well, Team Talk are walking the walk early on here at Rich Harvest Farms. Jed Morgan for birdie at 13. Beautifully done. This is Scott Vincent from Harare, Zimbabwe for birdie at four. Talk at three of the today so far. There are only three shots off the podium. It's looking less bleak for the cliques, Captain Martin Keimer. For birdie at nine, the cliques are two off the podium. As it stands, they haven't finished in the top three thus far in Live Golf. Back to the first for Peter Uline in his third shot. Oh, Sunday fun day, chaps. Isn't it great? Gonna get a climax here. A bit like Formula One, isn't it? Practice and then qualifying. Yeah, it's exciting, but uh, it's nothing like race day. And this is race day. And unfortunately, it's not an easy, easy up and down. Got to carry quite a lot of rough. And then it pitches on a down slope, and the wind's not helping him, it's slightly helping him. Yeah, the sand is kind of grainy, it's difficult to get any real spin on it. You can see that came out with no spin at all. Not a bad shot, though. It's getting worse as we speak, however. Now, yeah, DJ has a pretty good lie. It's going to be tough just because. You know, he's got short room to work with, but with his hands back into the breeze, slicing it, should be able to hit a pretty good one here. Oh, we got too much of it. Okay. Well, he didn't get off to a great start yesterday. Race. His second at 17. Mm, beauty there. And Team Stinger wants a little love and some podium position badly yet again. A few moments ago, this was for Team Punch Wade Ormsby. For his birdie, and he makes it. But overall, Smash and Punch have been struggling early on. Brooks Kepka for par at six, no. Smash is struggling, two over today. Matt Jones, par punt at the second, he misses. So Punch actually one over for today and suddenly the four aces lead is four shots. It could all change very quickly. Remember three of the four scores for each team count today. Well, Peter, you line with about 15 feet for par here up the hill and breaking from the right well he would dearly love this to drop that will calm the nerves looks good get a good putt oh, yeah. oh, That'll feel like a bonus if he can make four at the par five second. That'll be a great start. Cam's in the rough, but he's 10 feet from the hole. Oh, he might tow it. Yeah, looking at this one, just trying to get solid contact with the ball. Sometimes they'll just tap it with the toe, sometimes blade it with sand wedge, but. Uh... Well, he's going to go with the toe. I'm surprised. The lie's not bad. Huh? Here we go. I'm sure he's done this before. Horrible hot. Yeah, bubbled out sideways. Always difficult to get it online with that particular method. Take a look at this one again. Just jumped. 
Compl completely legal to intentionally strike the golf ball with any part of the club head, but the club cannot be designed with more than one striking surface. Louis stays in. Will in a moment be climbing up the pylon as we take another look from a different angle there of Cam Smith's attempt. Well, I can assure you that Louis is moving up the pylon. We'll show you that very shortly. All right, but with the leaders group on the opening hole, number one, Dustin Johnson, after pitch shot, he said was awful uh, by his standards. Brother AJ reading it, this for par, Dom. We've lost Dom. Oh, excuse me. Baba calling these shots. No wonder he didn't answer. Well, if you go back to yesterday, he missed that putt on 18. And this is another one he has a chance to try to save. So it might be creeping in his head if he misses this too. So this would be a huge putt. Not the start he was looking for. Back with Louis Oosthuizen. This was for his birdie at the fourth. He is the captain of the all-South African Stinger team. Has he got the legs? Of course it has. Great start for Louis. He's on five under individually. Stinger tied for second at the moment with Punch Golf Club, both three behind the four aces. That's his teammate right there, Brandon Grace. Yeah. Marty Keimer over at the 10. Just a short iron. And a lovely shot and flag high. <laughs> Charles Schwartzel at number two, Troy Mullins following the action. He's got a really long putt here. I think, honestly, you just want to get it close, get birdie and get out of here. <laughs> Keep it simple. He should move to his right as it gets up the hill, but you don't want it to slow down. Straight off the right. Okay. You line can get it out there. Yeah, he can. Just going with the fairway wood here, Dom. Yeah, I think, you know, with this, with the wind where it is, he can hit it out right and sling it a little bit. It'll go as far as a driver. Still get home in two easily. Oh, that uh, is. He likes massive. that one much better than his first tee shot. Cam just plays his own game. He doesn't worry about what's going on around him. Plays to his strengths. He's looking a little anxiously at it. Set. Oh. Nope. A yard shorter, he's perfect. That one seems to have settled down just a little bit. DJ next, and Dom and Bubba, what's the atmosphere like up there? I'm feeling it being a little more pressure packed than festive today. Is that anywhere near accurate? Yeah, I feel it. There's a little more focus on the faces of the players. Yeah, and the fans. Two. That one settles down as well. Yeah. 
Can Henrik Stenson make birdie at five for the Majestics? No mistakes there for the Swede. Carlos Ortiz for Eagle at 18. Yeah, we're going to see a bunch of Eagle putts here at 18 today. Don wins just 522 yards. Lovely try. Just turned back to the right at the end. Great putt. Short slow. I think he left more meat on this bone than he meant to. He's got about at least 15 feet. Should break a little bit to his right. Yeah, this is an unconvincing attempt. Pat Perez for his birdie at 12 for the four aces. Oldest member of the team and probably the one who feels the team pressure as much as anybody. Meanwhile, his uh, teammate, Taylor Gooch, this is to save par at the 11th. Oh, off after that one really quickly. Mm. I've seen some short putts missed. Hall with a shorty there. That's Abraham Answer over at the ninth. Oh, yeah. Back into his caddy, Benji Thompson, last night. That we were all staying at the same hotel, and he uh, said, Abe makes a few putts. He's going to make some noise today. Poulter. He's at minus four. Hudson. Hurt. Gotta love the guy. So laid back. Yeah, he actually he makes DJ look frenetic. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's so laid back he can't see over his pelvis. <laughs> Good shot there, Hud. Lucky Neiman is on the tee at five. Intimidating shot with a flag here in the front right. Be the number, Be the number he says. <laughs> yes. Not far from where it was on day one, is it? That hole? Yeah. Perez, the 13th. Always reminds me of, of the old Craig Stadler. Pat does. You know, you always know how he feels. With before the ball lands. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of times I played with Craig a few times, the amount of times that club was not in his hands, either one by the time <laughs> yeah. the ball landed was remarkable. Turk Pettit at 15. Yeah, not a lot of water on these greens, David. No, there hasn't been. Let's rejoin our lead group for the second dog. Yeah, yeah, Cam's lie. Actually, they're both they're a couple of yards apart from each other, Cam and DJ. But no one and I are just talking. And we both think yeah. DJ's got a better lie than Cam. This is just sitting down a little bit. Uh, we're at 91 all the way. Yeah, see you guys. Oh, they're gonna. Okay. Yeah, it is it's right here. Right here. Okay, so pitch number is. Yep, two five is perfect. Two five is playing. You know, hold it a little bit. So two of five is playing. Yeah. Yep. And this one. Six left is target. Right. Yeah. He turned over that three wood off the tee. He's gone 340. Great angle in. Although, just play it a little left. Early in the round, just try and walk off with a birdie. Don't get too greedy. Oh, that's turning over in the wind. That's going to miss the green left, I think. Throw something in the air with a little check or play a 
bump and run from there. We'll see. I don't think he's going to get get this ball up in the air too high. He's just got a six iron. Just needs to cover the front bunker. Little release. From our angle, it looks risky. That's got some heat on yeah, it. Yeah, came out low and left. He's got a better angle up the green than Peter Uline. That one in the rough. So DJ's DJ's got a seven iron, a little bit better loud than Cam. Um, the whole thing is just get in that front of that green and let it release. They all did the same thing. That's not bad. No, that's not bad at all. He tugged it a little, but he loved it to the end of it. The team title here in Chicago is hotting up. Wade Ormsby of Punch Golf Club, the all Aussie team. He's out of it in terms of the individual competition, but he is contributing today. And all of a sudden, it's a tie for first place between Punch and the four aces, both 16 under par. Speaking of the four aces, here's Pat Perez. Yeah, not an easy up and down. Downhill lie in the bunker. Green very speedy. That is just awesome. Yeah, Absolutely that's a awesome. fabulous shot from there. Phil Mickelson at hole number 10. Level par for the competition so far. Game is slowly showing signs of life. Yeah, it is. Charles Schwartzel on the tier three for the surging stingers. And Stinger have moved into a tie for third place. Thanks to some brilliant early play. This was for Birdie at the first for Schwartzel a long way away. Glorious from Schwartzel. Brandon Grace, our champion in Portland for Birdie at 17. Made no mistake there. Not to be left out, Captain Louis Oosthuizen for his Birdie at the fourth. just made it he is doing superbly stinger three under today they are two behind our joint leaders cam smith surveying what he has left First of all, let me apologise to you, Jerry. I wasn't ignoring you earlier when you called me in. Well, that's a first. I don't ignore you on a Sunday. Oh. Now, Cam is surveying, trying to figure out where he wants to pitch it. His lie's not too bad, in fact. He's in the rough. Peter Uline's got a perfect line. I almost prefer Cam's pitch. He doesn't have to deal with that high back fringe. There's a ridge that... Uh, Uline has to negotiate. Aim for a fish off the camp. Pitch him back into the wind. I think he's going to fly this quite a long way there. Maybe 15 feet short, 20 feet short. A little check on the second bounce and let it trickle. Is anyone better at this sort of a shot? than this man at the moment? Not currently, is there? I don't think so. Out at the par three, number five. This is second. Easy, easy. Oh, if it catches the flag at all, it goes in. <laughs> That's a bad break of sorts, isn't it? 
That's Harold Varner. Second shot of the first. Beauty from HV3. Well, like I said, perfect light. He's looking like he's going to chip it well short and maybe run it through the fringe quite a long way. I thought he might land it just short of the fringe, second bounce on the green, let it check, but I don't think that's the route he's going to take. Schwartzel out at number three. See if the Stingers can continue that march. Three under on the round as a team thus far. Three players each at one under. That's not going in. Well, can the cliques make a podium for the very first time? Kyman, McDowell, Cantor, and Richard Bland for his birdie at 17. They're four off the top three. Talk have had two fourth-place finishes and a fifth in Boston. Jed Morgan for birdie at 14. They're three under today, four off the podium. Lahiri for his birdie at six. He plays for the Crushers. And the Niblicks need a boost. Hudson Swafford for birdie at 13. But the Niblicks are still in 11th place. DJ now, Bubba Watson, with a bird's eye view. So DJ got to see how fast it is with Peter's chip. I mean, he's got to get this trickling just on the green, let it fall down to the hole. You, um, you all mentioned earlier about the energy. They're so focused on playing good golf for the team. I've talked to them all week, DJ and Cam. Um, so the atmosphere is phenomenal out here right now watching this. Everybody feels and looking at that leaderboard. Perfect. Kind of is amazing to me. David, I don't know how you felt about it. When you first heard about Live Golf, I thought the team aspect was going to take a while to catch on. The players have embraced it since day one. No, they have. I was skeptical about it, to be perfectly honest. But, uh, these guys want to play well for their pals. Look at this. Look at this. An eagle for Patrick Reed. He goes to three under individually, but that's a huge boost to the four aces who are too clear now of punch. Well, Peter Uline is going to show Cam Smith the line here. They're just about a foot apart. They certainly are, and it's going to break about six inches from the left, maybe even a touch more. Right to left, they hold on the first. Team Smash, the only team in the early goings here at the final round that is over par as a team. DeChambeau. This is the fourth. It's for a par. Ooh. Brandon Grace. Often saves his best for Sunday. And that's another birdie for our victor in Portland. And he is four under par. And that's another great move for Stinger, who are 14 under, tied for third with the Majestics. A few people gathered around there. Just a few. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I only missed one putt inside of 10 feet yesterday. That was on the par 5 11th. Don't think he's taking as much break as you line. Go! 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 <laughs> you show him the line. <laughs> He'll seldom miss. Wow. He'll seldom miss even if you don't show him the line. Just, just uncanny. Just uncanny. Mm. What a putting stroke. You know, so many professional golfers get to the end of the day and they think back of how many shots they left on the course. He gives you the impression, does Cam Smith, that he doesn't leave, he doesn't have many evenings like that. Yeah. He seems to get everything out of a round of golf, up and down from everywhere as Westwood misses that short one. Second short miss of the day for Lee. Okay. And a bit more than Dustin wanted here. Yeah, he came off the putter a little fast, off the fringe, but... You know, again, this is momentum. If he can get this one to drop, he saw the break from the other side with cams. Just got to get that speed right. No 
mistake from the big fella. And he's three back. After that bogey at the first. So a little glimpse of Greg Norman there watching uh, his young country mate. You've just seen uh, Scott Vincent move into the top ten. He plays for Talk Golf Club. And this is how he did it to go to four under par. The terrific, very consistent on the live golf circuit so far. That was the second shot of Pat Perez at 14. And that is going the wrong direction. Away from the hole. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pancake day. In the live golf world. EB Golf 1156 watching having a nice breakfast or brunch on this championship Sunday. Taylor Gooch has his uh, second shot at the 12th. And beautifully played. Changed the strategy. Talked to him. He was really surveying that fairway for the layup position on 12 because it's what 315 to the front edge and it's blind. And I think like so many players, they realize there's not much penalty if you don't quite get it there. So why not hit the driver? Matt Jones, par three fifths, win. 165, this is the easiest pin placement on this hole. You just know Matt wants to turn up a punch. And that is gonna be just a speedy oh. putt. Yeah. He said yesterday that he was having trouble with his draw, trouble with the curve. Showing my lack of baseball knowledge. Gooch makes his birdie at 12. So the four aces have a two-stroke lead over punch. And David has the fly swatter back in his hand. It's not going to end well in here. No, either. particularly when he extends it They've fully. Got, got, right, as he has done now. What's the cover? 56 is the cover. Yep. I got help by there. Heavy? I think it's just a nice one just coming down straight on it. Yep. Short short in the bug is fine, isn't it? Okay, so there's this I mean there's six there. Yeah. Yep. Heavy? Cool. Throw right with help. Throw right with help. T's been moved up here on the third, only 178 yards, but it's a tough pin. Good pins pin for DJ and Cam because they can play a little cut. Maybe a little tougher pin for you, Line, who likes to turn it over right to left with the wind helping from the right. You got no room on the right. Nine iron for Cam. It looks pretty good. Yes, it is. Dustin will be next, Bubba. Yeah, they're just second-guessing the win right now, but, you know, he just watched that great shot up there. He knows he's got to follow it. I, I mean, i got to think he's going to cut it in there like his normal shot with a 9-iron. Um, but he knows he has to attack because there's other players attacking. Oh, he's going with 8. No, definitely be a cut then, Bubba. I hope so. Or those hmm. people better watch out. <laughs> Taylor Gooch on the tee at the par 3 13th. I mean, I got one's a little left on him. And for Taylor today, it is all about the team. He's out of any legitimate chance in the individual competition, but he wants that team to go four in a row. Here is his teammate.
That's Cookie out there. That's out watching Dad today. Yeah. Uh, from Ashley Perez, Pat's wife. So. Looks like Cookie went through the... That's the, not a mullet. No, Cookie went through the car wash, the automated car wash, uh, with the windows down. Cotton candy machine, maybe? <laughs> Good shot from Peter Uline. Now, can Lee Westwood get things moving? He's on the tee at five. Level par today through three, five under overall. Said after day one that his swing was starting to feel like it did 20 years ago. He's been at the top of the game for a lot of years. At Waco on Instagram. Joaquin Go. Neiman. Go. Right. Lovely. Well, this to save par for Wade Ormsby and Team Punch, who are currently trailing the four aces by three strokes. To the dog leg. Left par four fourth with Charles Howell. He's at the corner of the dog leg there. Oh, and that's, oh, and if that's on the darn slope at the back of the bunker here. Look, he's going to come out low. And he's going to have a look at the yardage book, scratch his head. That was a bit of an Agatha Christie. The mystery. The mystery yardage. Always popular with the players, Jerry. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, he's completely surprised where that ended up. Love it. Yep, love it. Yes, correct. Schwartzel next, Troy, a lot farther up the fairway. Honestly, I think Charles just tried to hit it in the, the fat of the fairway, but he was a little blocked out on that last shot. So surprised he didn't work that fade in there. But here we have Charles. I think he knows now that he can go for the pin. The greens seem to be a little bit more receptive, so we might see them, you know, aiming right at the flag and going for it. Yeah, that's a beauty. Back to Dustin. Pretty straight. I mean, there's a pinch of left going up the hill, but pretty straight up at it. Try. Four races taking a stranglehold on the title here as they aim to four peat. This is Taylor Gooch to send them to 20 under par. Magnificently done by Taylor Gooch, who had a rough day yesterday after being in contention individually on the opening day. 20 under par for the four races, a four stroke lead. Gets to the front doorstep and collapses. Well, Uline, he's playing with a couple of heavyweights, but he's acquitted himself pretty well, you'd have to say. Played smart golf so far. Didn't really try to take this pin on too much. It was a tough pin for him to get close to. But this putt, it's downhill, but it's not one of those that will get away from you. I think this is quite makeable. Turns across the face of the hole at the last minute. A lovely effort. Well, I don't think I can take one there, do you? No. I'm coming off the eagle. Patrick Reed in the rough at number eight. And I mean, if you're hitting that downwind, probably like at 80, 85 percent. Well, I mean, it's either this or it's a stock 61. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I think you gotta hit that. The 111. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on the green. I don't think it's gonna be this. 
it's not. I mean, it is a sand wedge, I would think, but it's not like much of a wedge. While they wait, we'll go back to the leader by three shots, Cam Smith. Well, would it surprise anyone if it became four? No, a, it wouldn't be a shock. I think it'd be more surprising <laughs> if it didn't go in. <laughs> well, it's about 16 feet, I'd say. It's got to move just a bit from his right as it dies. Same exact routine. Eight, Patrick Reed did change club. That looks like one of his sand wedges now. I think they were talking about a full lot oh, wedge, 61 oh, yeah. degree. Oh, 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 and just the perfect nice club. <laughs> now it is. Brother in law Kessler Corrine and Patrick managed to figure that one out successfully. Lori Cantor over at the fourth. Judging it pretty nicely, David. Yeah. They're not really spinning back today. We'll get to see a few maybe into the wind, but they're not really spinning back. This is Dustin cleaning up for par at the third. Stays three back to Cam Smith. Joaquin Neiman with a birdie putt over at six. It a little firm. Back out to the fourth. Troy Mullins watching. Charles Schwartzel will now with the short putter. First time this inaugural live season. Putting with the short stick. This for another birdie, Troy. Jerry, you know what? He's been leaving putt short all day. And so I'm wondering if on this down breaking to the right um, you know it might work out if he keeps the speed that he's been using I don't think he should overread it should play left edge oh got away from him yeah right just as it went down the slope it almost veered right like it hit an imperfection which is hard to believe here C1 Kim. Mr. Volatile back in Boston. From a score standpoint, not from a behavior standpoint. <laughs> Clips the tree there. Wow. As I it could have gone anywhere. Yeah. Pass save here for Mark Leishman at nine for Team Punch. Nicely done. Remains. <laughs> Even for the competition, but that could be important for Punch, who are slipping behind the four aces. Four shots is the gap as we speak. Long, long way to go. Here's his captain, Cam Smith. And a look at this fourth hole. It's a real beauty. Underneath the bridge, back up. And the corner of the dog leg is right about here. Goes around. A square green that's raised up a little bit. With the driver, Dom. All right. Hmm, it's a beauty to look at, David, but not so much fun to play. Yeah, I think it's the, the prettiest hole on the golf course. It is. And it's the tightest. Well, with the driver, he's got to challenge the trees on the left side. You push it a little bit, he's through the fairway, and he's going to be blocked out. Well, the players who've been laying up shorter here have had the higher scores. Clipped a few trees, but he looks okay. Yeah. 
Looked to be a great lie in that rough, though. DJ next. Bubba Watson on the calls. On course commentator. Man does everything. It's been, pro been promoted already. Yeah, I know. And he's just, I mean, he takes to it like a duck to water. <laughs> well, DJ is going to aim it right at me or the trees and try <laughs> to barely cut it back into the fairway. Yeah, it doesn't really suit his uh, shot shape. Looks like he likes it. Yeah, he, does. he can figure out a way to thread it down there. Let's head to the tee at 16 and Wade Ormsby. He's one under today, contributing for Team Punch. Australian. Chase Kepka for Team Smash now finds themselves seven back of the lead. Help his brother and captain with that one. Chase is low man on the team right now for the final round. Matt Perez is one under on the day so far. Second shot at the 15th. Wow. Oh, Greens are firming up. Yeah, nothing stopping. Even with wedges. Yeah. Laurie Cantor at number five. Setting up for a little cut. Just 165 yards today. Lovely. Taylor Gooch wastes no time once he gets over the ball. It's second to the 14th. That one stops. Teammate Patrick Reed for birdie at eight. You can barely catch breath here on Championship Sunday mm -hmm. in Live Golf. This is David Pouge, just turned pro in time for Chicago. Birdie at 15, talk of four under today. Saddam Kalkanjana of the struggling Ironheads. Made his birdie at 13, but the Ironheads languishing at the moment in last place. Harold Varner third, Second shot at the first. That looks like a birdie opportunity to me for the Niblicks, and they did all they can get down at the bottom. One off the bottom. And perhaps heading for a stern talking to from non-playing captain Bubba Watson. <laughs> Looks like a sizable lip right here, but it's not much of an issue for Matt Jones out at number six. You're Sorry. right, Jerry. Yeah, he's got a good lie. Lip is not really an issue, but it looks like he just maybe a little fat. I can just feel kind of his disappointment, you know, when I was on the range. Just the punch group really wanted to, you can just feel like they really, really want to win and beat the four aces, but you can just feel like he's feeling a little flat today. Hopefully he'll find something as we watch Lee here. Yeah, the Majestic still looking for their first team title, like everybody else except for Stinger and uh, four aces, but they're the team that uh, bonded first and the most. I was having a chat with Lee on the range about uh, He's going to be in Singapore the week before Bangkok for the Singapore Grand Prix. And his drink of choice is champagne. Unlike Jerry. <laughs> We're not talking about that today. <laughs> now that was Taylor Gooch for birdie at 14. Another birdie for the four aces. It's five shots the lead now. It's Independence Day down in Chile, isn't it? Mm -hmm. For the great Waco Neiman from Chile. So happy Independence Day down there to everybody in Santiago and 
around that beautiful long thin country down the mm -hmm. west coast of south america 1 30 a.m in bali in bali nice everyone is asleep rooting for the shambo enesh is not asleep <laughs> he's watching <laughs> uh, ormsby for punch Back to four, Dom. You line first to play. Yeah, I'd rather be in Bali. 68, 68 <laughs> playing 50 back. Yeah. Yep, right at it. Start it. Kuta Beach, magnificent stretch of sand down there in Bali. Now, you line just got stayed on the fairway. You just keep. Got a tree in front of him, but far enough back to get over it. And laid back quite a long way there, 170 oh, yards. Well, that plugged. That's not good. Dom, if you're going to Bali or you're planning to go there, I I'd suggest you avoid the end of the AFL or the rugby league seasons in Australia. <laughs> Why is that? Because those teams, they get a little demob happy and they, they head for Bali en masse huh. to party it up. That sounds like more fun than not going. Just a lot of guys, big oh, guys. Yeah. No. Uh, Perez with his third shot of the 15th, just a little chip and skid. Well, that didn't look intentional, but it was. Oh, yeah. Well, it's only a four hour flight from Perth to Bali. That's why there's so many Australians down there. I'm yeah. sure Cam Smith has been there now. I bet he has. Not a great lie, really, for this pin. He's not going to get much spin. And he's probably seen Uline's ball plug also in that front bunker, so he doesn't want to end up there. Well, he's ended up there. We've seen a lot of action in that front bunker. Well, Cam Smith perhaps has the most famous mullets in world sports. Live to give is giving money for mullets here in Chicago. Hey guys, it's Sue Wen I'm here at the Fan Village at the Live to Give booth where you can get a free mullet and Liv is going to donate $1,000 to charity. How cool is that? And who doesn't want to look like Cam Smith, the man that inspired the mullet? I do have to ask you, how do you feel about bringing the mullet back into fashion? It's great. I think uh, a lot of people have embraced it. I think it makes a lot of people laugh. You know, that's what I'm about, putting a smile on people's face. Our CEO and commissioner, Greg Norman, is going to get a mullet today. Are you really going to get a mullet? I am. He's my idol. I heard that you're only going to do it for a big amount. Yes, at the moment we've got $30,000 guaranteed. Hopefully it's going to be a lot more after that. Pam, I think you're going to do the first little shave. Go down the middle. You ready? Yeah, go, baby. Oh. Uh -oh. Greg Norman, our commissioner, is now Live Golf's mullet in chief, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> the idea was to support Cam coming on board and to raise awareness of Live to Give. So for every mullet cut, $1,000 goes to charity. So that's raised 60000 and Greg insisted on 30000 more if he were to get a yep. mullet, so ninety grand so far. So commissioner mullet shark. A slip up there. Yeah. Well, it's getting better. Laurie Cantor is enjoying life in Illinois. This was for his birdie at the fifth hole to go to seven under par. He is challenging for the title here at Rich Harvest Farms. Now DeChambeau with his third shot at the sixth. Find trouble off the tee. Oh, 
gives himself a great chance to save par. Lovely shot. Peter Uline from the plug. He had a ferocious go at that one. You generally don't need to hit him that hard. I'll be good. I can get it. Chase Kepka with his second shot at the par five last. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. We may see more of that as the day goes on. That's for Eagle. Serious potential for the unthinkable, the albatross at 18 with that whole location. Brandon Grace out at number two, playing his third to the par five. Contemplating here, David. Yeah, there is. Let's hope it was worth waiting for. Get up. A little drift away there. Way more than that. That's a par putt for Peter Uline. I think he was trying to use the backstop with that bunker shot, but just flew it too far. This is quick. This screen is so baked out. Yeah, we're not dead yet. Patrick Reed at the ninth. Four aces started with the lead. They have the low team score of the day by two shots already. That's a nice recipe for success. Fourth time in a row, as is that. Mm. Patrick Reed looks good today. Mm. DeChambeau for par. That's right. Mm. Disappointment for DeChambeau. What about Bert Wiesberger? His second shot of 14 for the High Flyers. Three over for the competition. Chase Kepka, you saw him a few moments ago. He's got an eagle opportunity at 18. That was for birdie at 17. Wade Ormsby is uh, also going well, but that's Carlos Ortiz for birdie at two for the fireballs. And then Paul Casey for birdie at 12 to get it back to level par on the competition. But the crushes, they're struggling. Down in eighth place at the moment. Yeah, Even on the day. That. Okay. Bubba, you've got to read here. Yeah, it's coming off that bunker, so I think it's going to be slightly downhill, a little burnout, going to fall to his left. I don't think it's that much. And again, that momentum, every quality shot he hits, you know, he can build that confidence. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Almost rolled backwards off the front lip. Mark Leishman over at the 10th, trying to save par. Don't look now, but it's a six-stroke lead for the four aces. Yeah, Hunch desperately, desperately needs Leish to unleash. Hey, guys, is there a place where you can add hair to the top of your head? <laughs> Actually, it it well, costs you, more than a thousand dollars, Dom. If you had 30 grand, Dom, you might be able to uh, <laughs> yeah. get that done. Well, the best guy in the nation's right here in Chicago. We can make you an appointment, Dom. Actually, I don't think I've actually lost any hair. It just seems to have gone all into my ears. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, this is not easy. This, like I said, it's so baked out. There's no friction on this putt. It could slide right very quickly. Oh, oh wow. Mm. Well, he gives one back. Well, as Dom tries to persuade the hair from his ears back to the top of his head. 
Cameron Smith's lead at the top of the pile on it's down to two strokes. That's Joaquin Neiman at seven playing his third shot after laying up nicely to the par five. Chase Kepka for Eagle at 18. Yes. For Team Smash, who now move back up to second place. 15 under par, they're a shot clear of punch, but six behind the four aces. Long bunker shot from Taylor Gurchin, a beauty. Sixteen down below the front of the green. We have Kevin Na, captain of the Ironheads. Where are they? They're not. Uh, they're not good today. They're last. and confidant Kenny Harms on the bag. Yeah, Kenny's been doing this a long time. He has. is back to two. Well, the 18th hole was bogey-free yesterday. Seven eagles, 30 birdies. James Pyatt's with his third. Cameron Tringali for eagle. Yes. And Chikara at the second for his eagle. Oh, narrowly misses. But a birdie to go one under par for Eugenio Chikara. Patrick Reed hit it right at the flagstick with his second shot at number nine. He takes advantage of that one. He gets it to minus four, six back. DJ now at the fifth. DJ's got a nine iron. This is a tough little pin today. Got to make sure you fly it all the way there because of the water, but. Beautiful angle of cutting in there. It's the right distance. Wow, just carries. <laughs> See, guys, I walked from the fourth green to the fifth tee with Baba. I don't know who's more popular. Yeah, we got help there right there. What, you or yep. Baba? That's easy. <laughs> Good? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me finish. The players <laughs> or Bubba. You know what's funny? I don't. Maybe, maybe this is just me, uh, but I, the American crowd obviously roots for their countrymen. They want Americans to win at every sport, uh, especially when it's international. But it seems like the country they have adopted more to root for when it's not American is Australia, and I think it's just because they, I don't know, they're such easy people to like. Nine nine. Well, here's Gooch to say par at 15. Oh, oh yeah. wow. That is not even dead yet. That, uh, that won't help the four aces. Is that a relation of, uh, of divot there? Oh. Absolutely transfixed by the golf. Mm -hmm. Madison Toon. <laughs> there's, the ma there's the mascot for the Ironheads. <laughs> <laughs> the only way to make ironing bearable. You are now officially an iron head. You lying on the tee. Yeah, also nine iron, just a soft one. Right out. Right out. Right out. Right out. Right out. Right out. 
Boy, he liked the line on that one. You could tell him I ended up and down the flag stick. Just a half a bat too much. So Taylor Gooch now with a bogey putt. Oh, help. Oh, my goodness. That was two pulls in a row. Well, he's trying to make the team competition interesting. Single-handedly on that hole. Yeah, well, they won't fall far because uh, Dustin Johnson was the last one not counting. The only score not counting. He's even far. The lead was eight shots about two minutes ago. He's down to five again now. Over at the 12th, Philip. Long one for Eagle. Punch is still in it. Wade Ormsby at 17. Oh, what a beautiful little shot. Fabulous. <laughs> He's having a terrific day through that way. Right underneath that one. Whipped it through. Such a short shot. Big swing. Two under today. Wade Ormsby. Turk Pettit at 18. Turk Pettit is from Sugar Grove, North Carolina. And we're in Sugar Grove, Illinois. So is this a home game? It's Sister City. Right at the flagstick, too. To the tier three for Tories, Brandon Grace. Oh, it's a nice little kick. Well, hopefully, Taylor Gooch has got a short memory. That just rattles you, though, David, when you do no, what he does. did on the line. You, just, you, you are going to be thinking about it on your next three-footer. Well, especially when you've hit a couple of pulls, you, when you hit one, you would think the knee-jerk reaction is to is to shove the next one. Mm -hmm. That's it. Back out with the lead group. Cam Smith held his hand out on the tee as if to say, how on earth did that ball not feed back towards the hole? And standing on the green here over the ball, I agree. Yeah, it's got to be a quick putt, Dom. Oh, it just falls straight down towards the front edge of that green from where he is. But I think he'd be, I think he can handle this. I'd certainly rather be where DJ is than the other two. He hasn't used aim point that much that we've seen, have we, this week? Uh, you'll see him straddling the line quite often, just uh, which foot has more pressure. Figure out the slope. No surprise, he is the putting leader, Live Golf. A little early in the career, live career of Cam Smith for those to be all that relevant statistically, but it's, uh, that one actually is because he's the best putter alive. You, you mentioned the Australians and the, and the Americans like for the Aussies. In sporting terms, you don't necessarily go head-to-head -head in many different sports. I remember no. the, the America's Cup famously in the 1980s, which America held for years and years and years, and the Aussies won that. And it's often referred to as the greatest Australian sporting triumph. Well, his victory in the America's Cup, I think, 83. Didn't they have a weird hole? Or are you trying to claim they cheated? Yeah, well, no, I'm not. Just, just a question. How quick that is. Barely got that started, and that is a nasty little four-footer. Mackie Neiman represents Chile, where soccer is king. 
makes his birdie at the seventh. All right, Scott Vincent out at number eight has this one for birdie. Team Torque. Scott has been joined this week by wife Kelsey and daughter Zoe. Zoe, Zoe and cheer on dad. <laughs> I think they live in Colorado, is that right? I believe him when he was telling us a story over in uh, England, which seems like 10 years ago now. <laughs> uh, that was the case, yes. This is American base. U line off the green for birdie. A lot of swing from right to left, and it's quick at the end. He's in a massive amount of Sergio so far today, but this was for his birdie at eight to inch up the pylon to four under par. The fireballs haven't really challenged thus far in Chicago. They're down in ninth. They're two under today, nine under overall, which is five off the podium. DJ has a chance here at five to put a little more pressure on Cameron Smith if he were to knock this in. Cameron with a nasty little four footer. Yeah, DJ's got a great putt here, great opportunity straight up the hill. It's going to be a really slow. I think it goes just a, a little right in the last foot and a half. I, I didn't feel any. Before Austin set a foot and a half, I had it at a foot. Right up the hill. It makes that four footer from Cam a lot tougher if this goes in. Oh, he didn't hit it. Oh. Schwartzel over at the six hole for birdie. Get in there. Good effort. David, we needed your plane spotting skills earlier, and an F something just flew overhead. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, he wasn't out there with the swatter. Mm. There, beautiful stroke. Patrick Reed of the leading four aces. What do we got? Five shot lead now. The team five under for the day. This is second shot to number ten. Hey, right, hey, right there. Wow, what kind of bounce? Agreed. A bad one. Well, Taylor Gooch for birdie at 16 will want to leave this one dead at least after a couple of short misses. It should be all right. Grace at three for birdie. Stinger's currently tied for third. Back to the green one. David, what's the uh, what's the more frustrating miss for a professional golfer? The one dead short in the jaw or the or the wicked lip out? I, I think short. <laughs> it was all we, you know, because it never had a chance, you know, if it, if it does a horseshoe on you, at least you you got it there. So the four aces with a five-stroke lead over punch. It's USA against the Aussies, and we talked about the America's Cup. It was September the 26th, 1983. So we're talking, how long ago? 39 years. Alan Bond, the captain of Australia 2, yeah. against Dennis, Dennis Connor. Connor. Yes. 
the Americans had held the America's Cup for 132 years. And they were 3-1 up, the Americans, in a best-of-seven race. And the Aussies came roaring back with this unusual hull design, apparently, yeah. which was fair, may I add, Jerry. It was fair. It passed all the tests. They were, they were, evidently they had scuba divers covertly checking it out uh, yeah. to study what they did. So, right. And then all the rules changed after that. Now, it's just so fitting. Pat Perez is rocking this just uh, as the younger generation would say, sick Air Jordans. I read somewhere he's got a thousand pairs of Air Jordans. Yeah. And they're, they're, uh, they're nice ones. They're, they're only the, uh, two feet. You got 97 vests, well, waistcoats, <laughs> and only one torso. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Right there. DJ T shot away right at six. There. Now Cam Smith, Dom. Driver. Checking. Still checking. Come on, Jerry. Talk to our director. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Fairway Wood. Yeah, that's the smart club. Downwind, same as yesterday. You know, he pushed it yesterday, and he's just far enough back. Those trees don't come into play. I might move back to the tees now and stop having to rely on you. Oh, bunker. No, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Fairly flat bunker, no real lips to speak of in these fairway bunkers here at Rich Harvest Farms. Well, Team Smash had a an awkward start to the day, sliding a little bit further behind uh, the four aces, but Chase Kepka is tearing it up out there. This was for his birdie at 17. Then an eagle put here at 18. And this was for Birdie at the first. Very impressive today from Chase Kepko, who individually is four under today. Smash tied for second with Team Punch 15 under par, but the four aces still lead the way by five. Chase Kepka is in the top 10 now, tied for eighth individually. Deschambeau for par over at the seven. You know, surprisingly, he hasn't played his par fives very well this week, considering how long he bombs it. He's not quite capitalizing at all. Patrick Reed from just off the edge of the green here at 10. Oh, yeah. Played it beautifully. Oh, yeah. uh, Six shot lead for the unbeatable four aces, Arlo. Yep. Pat Perez. At the moment, he's the score that doesn't count for the four aces. our own field of golfing dreams here in Illinois. Live Golf has come to Rich Harvest Farms, 50 miles from downtown Chicago. And 48 players here have put on a show in front of massive crowds, biggest, bigger crowds than we've seen so far. Around the Live Golf circuit, they've come out in their thousands here. It's a massive, massive property, so it can accommodate even more if the tickets were available. Henrik Stenson over at nine. Graphic down below telling you basically we call them stoplights. This is a caution hole. Not as frightening as the reds, not as easy as the greens.
playing alongside Scott Vincent. Scott with the long sleeves from uh, Harare. I wish I'd worn long sleeves more often in my youth. Jerry, use the fair skin and, you know, any dermatologist will tell you wear them. I'm paying for it now. Well, you and I grew up before they invented sunscreen. That's right, yeah. And the TV. Crunch are making a bit of a mess of this. This was for seven. For Matt Jones at the eighth. Leishman has made a double bogey as well. And they are all of a sudden in fourth. The seven strokes behind the four aces, one behind Stinger. They're counting a three over par today so far. Sergio at nine. Right at it. Just to mark your card, everybody, by the way, in about a minute's time at 1.59, the horn will blow and sound across Rich Harvest Farms, and play will pause to honor a worldwide moment of silence for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. So that's in around seven or eight minutes' time. Yep, down a little off our left still. I think we need to have a little cushion. I kind of, I see a guy in navy blue shorts and blue shirt. Just yeah, about. Right yeah, yeah. That's right where I'm looking. So pitch 48, 48 with this lie in the wind. Yeah, love that. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. No, not with the wedge. That's perfect. Well, it's a wedge. Fortunately for him, it's a back pin. Plenty of room to work with. Downwind out of the rough. Getting firmer as we speak. Joaquin Neiman to get one closer to the lead. This is get to three back of Smith. Not to be. Powering it through the break. Five players tied at six under par, four back. I don't think so, might have played. This is the bunker that Matthew Wolf drew a terrible line yesterday. Cairns is fine, although there are some deep rate marks in this bunker. He avoided them. Foot slipped just a tiny bit there. And the change of direction might have helped cause that. Well, DJ has got to negotiate some trees in front of him. Shouldn't be a problem. Come on, come on. few man hours to make that corn maze. Day. Yeah, that's a... I think next year you come and we tape you take care of that for <laughs> Taylor Gooch at 17. That's more like it for Taylor. Carlos Ortiz is on the tee at five. Gets over the rocks. Yeah. Under the hole. Not a hard putt from there. Yeah, it's good now. Wade well, Ormsby is the only man really swinging haymakers today. On the final day, he's two under. That was at 18, so he'll have that for birdie just to get punch 
back level with Stinger in third place. That is a little surprising. Two unders, low score of the day thus far. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised at that. Well, Patrick Reed is helping the four aces today. He's four under on the day so far. This is third shot at the seventh. Has he got the legs? Yes, it has. Second shot at nine. He's five under overall. Beautifully done by Patrick Reed. And next to his third shot at the tenth. Reed and Chase Kepka for the four under on the round. Correction. Four aces, 20 under par, a five shot lead over Smash. The Wade Ormsby narrow the gap. Wow, that just, it looked like a classic push off the putter face there. Cam Smith, front bunker. What's the toughest shot in golf? It's this one. The one after a shank. <laughs> well, that, that one too. Yeah, 45 yards he's got. You've got to catch it just perfectly. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's using his most lofted club. Yeah, he didn't like it. So a little gap, a little chink of daylight, maybe. He comes back a shot or two. This thing is wide open oh, with a yeah. lot of pursuers. Holtz on 5T. He's got an awful lot. Everything. Growing against, against him. him. Yeah. Only needs to carry it four feet. Yeah, this is the one you can hit twice if you're not careful. Oh, a little bit of a break there. Which is a good part of the hole, slows it down. I was going ten feet by. So the horn will blow very shortly and we will take a respectful pause. Before that, here's Taylor Gooch for his birdie at 17. They also shrug off the ills the 16th green a few moments ago. Go back to the sixth hole. Well, similar length putts here for uh, DJ and Cam Smith, slightly different angles. DJ is a uh Miss some putts he wish he could have made, but this is the kind that just falls in. So there's the announcement. Play will pause for a moment to honor a worldwide moment of silence for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. and with golf joins the world in one minute of silence to mourn and reflect on the life of legacy of Queen Elizabeth. As her message of unity and peace inspires people throughout the world for generations.
The passing of Her Majesty has affected so many people. She reigned for 70 years. She will be laid to rest in Westminster Abbey tomorrow alongside her husband of 74 years, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. Her Majesty passed away at the age of 96. And some of the scenes uh, in London over the past 10 days or so, lines and lines of people queuing to watch her lying in state in Westminster Abbey, waiting 10, 12, 14 hours, quite remarkable. 24 yesterday. Yep. DJ just missing, and uh, always you hate to give your opponent a good look at the speed and the line. Cameron Smith will have a good idea. Chase Kepka now. He's on a tear. He is. Best oh, finish. He was. Best finish in uh, Live Golf is 17th. He is going to eclipse that today if he continues playing like this. Cameron Smith now knows there's a little left to right. Certainly does, but uh, Bubba, these guys, they're, they're struggling a little bit out here, this, this league group. They're letting a few players in. Yeah, I, I think they're just, you know, they're wanting it so bad. I think every golfer is wanting it so bad that it just doesn't go their way. Cam was uh, showing a little frustration just now. Smashed the grip of his putter or oh, his wedge into the meat of his bag. Let some frustration out. I like that. Get it out. Yeah, get a little fire under him. Knock this in and get some more fire. Bobby, you never showed any frustration, did you? Not that I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one shot of a time. One shot at a time, guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, good effort. Not to be. Lee Westwood has a second shot here at the eighth. Oh. Well, we had a little quiz game earlier on with Lee and his wife, Helen, who's on the back today. Hi, I'm Lee. And I'm Helen. And we are Mr. and Mrs. Westwood. Who is the funniest? I am, obviously. Shut up. I tell, I tell the best dad jokes ever. Just ask my kids. Absolutely not. Who's got the worst habits? Definitely Westy. Do you want me to tell them about last night in the lift? If you must. <laughs> I thought it was perfect timing. I let off a massive fart and then ran away and left Porter in there to endure it. For a couple more floors. <laughs> Who wears the trousers? Well, neither of us now. You can wear shorts all the time on this tour, can't you? So. <laughs> the the smile on Westy's face when yeah. Helen tells a story about the elevator. That is wrong on so many levels. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but ultimately, if it was Poulter involved, it was quite right. <laughs> we have digressed. Good luck from Phil. Pat Perez with his third of the 18. Oh, what a good try. Paul Casey plays for the Crushers. This is his third live golf tournament. This for Birdie at the 13th. Matara Kongwok Mai is part of the struggling Ironheads who are in 12th and last place at the moment. That was his third at the 11th. Jed Morgan. For Eagle at 18, there are plenty of Eagle opportunities at 18, but this one slides by for Jed. He is three over for the competition, but talk. Well, they're in, in, there or thereabouts for the podium. 12 under at the moment, two shots behind Stinger. It's a par play for Graham McDowell out at number 15. Not having his best week. Okay, 
right there. From the Live Golf Corn Maze is the seventh tee box. With a narrow shoot. You know, there's kind of a fairway down the right hand side as well here. You don't want to be there. All right, Alf, giving us a look, David. Yeah, and between the pine trees here and the hardwoods on the left. See, it squeezes in. These are the bunkers that Dustin has just found. All the way down the fairway, and a little water hazard in front of the green here with a nice ornamental rock wall that you want to be absolutely nowhere near. Ian Poulter for birdie. This is at the fifth, and ooh, yikes. Yo. The after effects of... Uh, the ride with Westy. Leishman for team punch. This is for Eagle. They need something good to start happening. Falling all the way down to fifth or tied for fourth in the team competition. Back to Cam Smith on the tee at seven. Dom. And it is a long way back. This hole over 600 yards. No chance for Cam to get on in two, unlike Matt Wolf and. Bryson DeChambeau, it's going to be a three shot of front. Final group or the lead group is a combined two over par for the three players. Aces hanging on to a five shot lead for the four peak. Pat Perez adding one to it at 18 for birdie. Teammate Patrick Reed has his third shot at the 11th. Laid up here, had to play a huge flop, and that's a beauty. That man is awesome. Who's chasing Team Stinger at nine? Holds the dubious distinction of having completed the career Grand Slam runner ups. Runner, runner ups in, uh, in majors. A little video he uh, posted. A couple years ago on the plane ride home was lip sync video was absolutely hilarious. Mm -hmm. Stenson not able to gouge it out of the rough all the way to the green, but just before that from the bunker, it was Scott Vincent. Solid contact. Joaquin Neiman at the ninth hole with his second shot. Hmm. Almost jumps in the can. Player tracker walking down the seventh fairway. Shortest distance remaining to the hole. Louis stays in for birdie at nine. Yeah. He joins 
the four-way tie now for fourth place with Neiman and Cantor and Uline. And it puts Stinger into third place in the team competition on 14 under par. Seven back. Well, he is, and I already said it's probably at 8, 241, 5 down, 236. That's 228 adjusted there. And the cover, five short is going to be 231 to cover and line the pin. Oh ho. Darm, it looks like he might have a go at it. Come onto the green and line the pin. Bubba said to me, I hope he goes for it. And he's right. Yep, whatever's easy, yep. in, off, in off your right. Yep. Heavy? Yep. Love it. That's up, mate. As soon as I saw his drive bounce down the fairway, I was like, please go for it. Because I wanted him to be wrong. <laughs> the wind shifted, though, Bubba. Oh, that's what it was. Stick around, Bubba. You'll, you'll get used to it. So I'm being wrong. It's not the first time. He wants something to happen in the round. This could be it. Oh boy, this looks very good. Yeah. Almost impossible to, to get that close. Let's stay for DJ. Bubba, I have a question for you. As, as captain of the Niblicks, you'll be playing next season. How are we going to break up this potential monopoly of the four aces here? Is there, a, is there a trade system, a transfer system? What's going to happen here? There's definitely rumors I've heard of teams changing and, and logos changing and players changing. And so I think in January, there's going to be a lot of change in, um, in a good way. And so I think it's going to uh, scare the aces quite a bit. <laughs> Could get the number of Jeff Kawuli. Call him in. Bubba, never change. You're pretty good as you are. I agree. 125 finish. Famous figure skating land, scandal. Land. Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Hardy. Well, good luck trying that on Pat Perez yeah. or Dustin Johnson. <laughs> King of the mullets. So you're a little bit thick on the sides there. You know, I'd David. forgotten I'm not about sure. that. Yeah. Is, does that qualify technically as, yeah. a, as a mullet? It was. It was long enough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't go with full, uh, full shavy post. Circa what year? A long time ago. Was that? 19. Long time ago. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I look pretty good though. I do. I just kind of think it's something humorous about it, but it's a good look. Leash for punch. Needs to help that team. That's all he's really playing for at the time. Wacky Neiman for his birdie at nine. To join Dustin Johnson. No, excuse me, that was a little earlier on, so he remains a shot behind Dustin Johnson. Only two behind Cam Smith. And a long way to go. Sergio, his third shot at the 10th. Oh! <laughs> Rucks it up. Falls down stone dead. You don't see Take that when you day. get him. You don't see that little reaction every day, do you? You don't. Brandon Grace at five. Brandon Gris with this very quick one at the fifth. We've seen this all afternoon. Extremely difficult putt. We saw him just a little while ago leave that one short in the jar. This one not too easy to leave short. Oh, he 
managed. Yep. That didn't scare it. Yeah, laid up well to the right side. It doesn't have to come over the bunker, that pop bunker in the front of the green, just to the right of it. It is curious how he doesn't use the glove on the wedges, but he does on all other full shots. Well, Scott Vincent is moving up the pylon. He represents Torn Golf Club yeah. from Zimbabwe. That was for birdie. He is five under par. Mm, a little offline there. Mark Leishman for birdie at 13. the counting score at plus two today for team punch yeah, Matt Jones four over for the day not so good no We'll go to the eighth. The Englishman Laurie Cantor. It's his second shot. Paul Casey. A few moments ago, his second shot of 15, playing for the Crushers. He's having a good championship Sunday, three under for the day. He would make his birdie there. And the Crushers are only two off the podium. Magnificent from Paul Casey. Kevin Nars, Ironheads, they are struggling at the foot of the team pylon. That would have helped. That was his third at 18. He would make his birdie. Hudson Swafford, one over par for the Niblicks, birdie at 18. Carlos Ortiz rolls that one in for the fireballs for a birdie at the fifth. Oh, back at seven, Kyle Smith in the driver's seat here. Oh, it sounded a little muffy. A couple uncharacteristic mistakes out of Cam today. Around the greens, too. Obviously wasn't lying particularly well, but Take a look at the contact here. Uh, pops up and comes out very soft on him. Didn't quite get the downward blow on it to shove it out low. The shambo at nine. This is a downhill left to rider. By the way, speaking of mullets, I was going to vote David Faraday to. Uh, Get a mullet this week at the booth. I, I would, I would. You know, I just don't have the length. I saw your picture. You look pretty good. You look pretty good. But uh, <laughs> certainly not going to be Jerry. He doesn't have enough hair. Oof. And Arlo oh. can, oh. well, Arlo can barely pull off his current hairstyle. So, <laughs> so it might be time David. for a change then, Sue. So, uh, maybe I need a change. <laughs> David's David's the best bet, I say. You know, mullets <laughs> aren't just for men, Sue. So, uh, <laughs> I think I'll get fired. I got the Clippers. Three to nine. That's Matt Jones. Not his day. Man, he's been uh, seeing some proper Aussie cuss words out here. Have you, have you been learning <laughs> some new words out there? <laughs> so it's not so. Four over today, Matt Jones. He scores counting on the opening two days. It doesn't look like he's going to count today. AJ pointing a spot to roll the ball across for the brother DJ. Bubba? 
That little hanging lie in the fairway from 100 yards, he tugged it just a little bit with the ball above his feet, but back up the hill, he can give it a run. Puts a little heat on. We have joint leaders once again here at the Live Golf Invitational in Chicago. Cameron Smith and now Dustin Johnson, both nine under par. Yeah, I mean, remember on six, it bounced out a little more. I think the same thing's going to happen here with this green. Yes. Well, we haven't seen much of Anna Van Lahiri. This is the second shot at the 12th. Right about middle of the pack for Anna Van individually. Part of the Ironheads, and they are bringing up the trail in. Excuse me, Crushers. They're 10 back. Retake the lead, Cameron Smith. Just when you think he's going to get one back. That's marvelous from Cam Smith. He responds to Dustin Johnson and retakes that one stroke lead. The two leaders have 11 holes to play. Likes it in the air. Should. Beauty. And a free read. Third shot at the eighth here for John Swartzel a few moments ago. He's moving back up the pylon. In it goes. Swartzel six under. Sting up 14 under in a tie for third with Team Punch. Yeah. Peter, you like that it now. Good line, you like. Seven under for Peter. Three back of Cam Smith. And that puts Smash into second place within six of the four races. Those three perfect putts from that group. Which way is this going? If you were to call it now, David and Jerry, individually. I, you know, I like Cameron Smith. But it, it's hard to, especially, you know, you look at that last putt that he held when it looked like he was going to get one back. He's just amazing under pressure and has been over, over the last few months. I'm going to go out on a limb and say four aces is the way it's going to go. <laughs> they only lead by six right now. That's why you get the big books. Mm. Oh. Jadiah Morgan. Rattles one in. Southwest, I mean, it should be over. I mean, I think I think it's fine. All right, good target. See you, shot. <laughs> Dustin must be wondering what he's got to do to get his nose in front here. That's a good start.
it's downwind. Uline's got the power to get it in the front bunkers, the green side bunkers with the front pin. That's not a terrible spot to be. Yeah, exactly. I think he has flavored golf gloves, Dave. His pre-shot routine is chewing on the glove. Oh, yeah? Yeah, every time. Mm. Well, two heavyweights going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's fun to watch. Heavy? Okay. DJ's ball's a great target. I think the crowd are into it now. That was a big moment. for birdie at 16. Cavalier in honor of Phil. Phil's five part calf workout. <laughs> That's very good. He's only on part three. Yeah, but I mean, look at the bottom right there. Yeah. Yeah. Good calves. Lambda's art. What if he was commissioned for mm. that piece of artwork? Do you think Phil can sense that it's coming back? Yeah, I think that uh, he's a, a good deal more uh, optimistic about it. Certainly looks better. Chase Kepka. Sit. Sit. Dude, it just came out so fast out of that tight line there. Jason Kokrak for birdie at 12. This could help the Smash team who are currently in second place. Not quite. Smash remains six behind the four aces in second. Talker now third, by the way, 15 under par as the slumping punch team slip off the podium again. And not counting for Smash is the captain today, as of right now. Brooks Kepka here, the leading four aces. Inside Patrick left. Reed has this for par. So the that were you at the edge? I was at the edge, playing down. Now, Patrick Reed has been on a roll. He would Really love to knock this one and keep the momentum going. I mean, yeah, inside left, I think it's going to be good. Gotta go that way, baby. Not what he was looking for. Go back to his team captain, Dustin Johnson. The second shot at eight, Bubba Watson nearby. Yeah, he laid it up beautifully, right in the middle of the fairway. Downwind, um, got a wedge in his hand to a tucked pin. But he's worked so hard on these wedges. This is what's uh, made him a top player for many, many years. 
That green was rock hard around the hole. Bubba, you've won so many tournaments everywhere. Oh, yeah, that was a big moment on that seventh green. Important shot. Yeah, so to Happy. DJ to make the putt and then Cam to make it on top of him. That showed a lot of guts and, and drive to win this tournament. I wonder if he saw that first bounce. If he did, he's got to just carry the bunker, which brings a bit more risk. But the front bunker's better than where DJ ended up. Westwood at 10. Sue Ann? These hole locations tucked back left today behind that bunker tricky hole location. I had a chat with Helen oh. on, Come on man. the last hole, and she said when they won in South Africa together, he gave her a microwave oven. And I said, a microwave oven? He should be giving you a kitchen. <laughs> Must have already had a nice vacuum. Now, you line. Horrible spot. Horrible. Downwind. No one to work with. He's got to go. Oh, what a shot. Ah, no spin. Honorbon Lahiri. Par 3.13. Imagine that all these players and all these teams are looking at the leaderboard in the team competition and sensing there could be a podium finish. Now remember there, there are points to gather for the team championship at the end of the season in Miami. The top four will get a bye through the quarterfinals into the semi-finals. And it's bunched behind the four aces. It's bunched up, isn't it? Smash 16 under. Talk. They made a move today. 15 under. Punch, who were challenging for first place overnight. They've had a poor day, so they're off the podium at the moment. Stinger always there and thereabouts. Can the Crushers and the Majestics, maybe the High Flyers and the Fireballs, it's there for the taking for them. If they can put a run together on the back nine, the closing holes here on Championship Sunday. Well, Cleek's even at nine under mm. Arn. Out, just the bottom two teams, Nivelix and Ironheads are pretty much done. But we're going to go back out to Jason Kokrak at the par three Troy Mullins watching. He has 197. It's a front right pin. The pin's actually in a pretty fair spot. So I think if he gets it just at pin high, he could spin it back and be right next to it. He plays this nice little push fade. So I think having a right pin could be great. Oh, that's surprising. Well, he was kind of in between clubs there. Came out quick. Back to the 13th tee for Patrick Reed, who is four and a par through eight holes so far today. Vincent for his birdie at 11. Just passed for, for Scott. He's two under for the day. Talk, though, eight under for the day. And they are in third place at the moment. Peter Uli missed his 
birdie putt, and this is DJ for par. DJ had a bad lie in the rough, came out super hot. Not the way he drew it up after hitting that iron perfectly in the middle of the fairway. I don't have much. I just got a little right turn there at the end, a little outside the left. I think it's just that last four feet, start sliding a little right, pretty straight the rest of the way. Three to try and help Team Torque is currently in third. They, had, they haven't had a podium yet, have they? No. Two fourth places and a fifth place. This could be their day, finally. There's a lot of golf between now and then with three scores counting. They could also finish last. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of talk, they are making a move. They flirted with the podium three times, as we've mentioned. Scott Vincent for his birdie at the fourth. That would make it. Lucky Neiman on Independence Day for his nation of Chile. That was his third at the seventh hole. And he's also climbing the pine on in the individual competition. We just saw Jed Morgan. This is for Eagle at the second. That got them moving. And talk are in third. A stroke ahead of punch. And they're on the podium. Oh, Sam Pinfo told me this is exactly where he was aiming. Didn't want anything to do with the pin after seeing DJ's first bounce. What a great read. And another great cut. He leads by two. Westwood surveying his par put here in the shadows on the 10th. Yeah, I sense some frustration coming from Lee Westwood. Typically doesn't show very much emotions on the golf course, but he was not happy with that first putt, leaving him with this tester uphill for a par. Jason Kokrak, saw him come up short at 13. This is his second shot. It's beautifully played. Apparently we have a new drinking game and there's, um, you, might, you might actually finish that entire shelf by the end of play today, says Golf Fan 79. Live Golf drinking game, take a shot of whiskey every time Arlo White says moving up the pylon. Live I've Golf broadcast. It's what it's called. I've lost that game before. Yeah, yeah. you lost the game last night. <laughs> Short soul. This for par at it. Number nine, a little earlier. Anaban Lahiri at 13 for birdie. at seven for birdie. Range, swing a little left. Oh, yeah. I just had a text from my father in the East Midlands of England watching, and it simply said, up oh, the Majestics. <laughs> I wonder if he's playing the new drinking game. <laughs> Heavy.
Kemp Smith on the tee at nine. Got to hit a big banana cut on this tee, which he can do quite comfortably. Patrick Reed trying to get that one back at 13. Yes. Patrick Reed gets the putter going. Look out. U line at nine, Dom. It may be not quite as comfortable a shot for you line hitting a big banana cut. You can do it, but not his stock shot. He's fighting it hard. Oh, he's going to hit a beautiful shot. Low and cutting right up the middle of the fairway. Oh, oh, he made it into the bunker. DJ next. Bubba. This is a perfect hole for DJ. Aim it down the left and cut it back. He just watched the guy in front of him hitting the bunker, so definitely doesn't want to do that. It's a beautiful shape. Oh, and it's not in great shape either. But he has a great ankle. Yeah. Yeah, those are two clean lies. Won't be a problem. Just didn't get enough cut on it. Yeah, and you got like a. James Pyatt on the tee at number five. Done. We got Cameron Smith leading by three, four aces leading by six. Just not uh, all the volatility in the team matchup is just on the second and third positions, not at the lead. And they're pretty comfortable there, the four aces. This is Pachara Kongwamai, member of the Ironheads. Mark Leishman to save his par at 15. So he is four over for the day, and it's a contest between Leishman and Jones to see which score counts. Both four over today for Team Punch, who are level today, but they've slipped out of the top three spots. So we're approaching the final nine holes here in Chicago. Eugenio Chacada for his birdie at the fifth. He represents the Fireballs. Sean Norris in the individual contest not going particularly well. He could yet help Team Stinger. That was for Eagle at the second. And then Chacada again, his second shot at the sixth hole. Nicely done. And even down in sixth place, the fireballs are five under today and could yet make a late surge. <laughs> Who've we got here? Dabo from Augusta. Dabo. Yeah, rocking the mullet. There we go. Likely named after the football coach, Dabo Swinney. This is a par putt for Phil Mickelson at 17.
good speed, not the result. Here's this Corey Alpha lift. Let's shop. Yep. Good. Corey Alpha lift, mate. If there's a green light pin out here, this is it. Coming straight up the front edge of the green. No bunkers to deal with. He could probably land a pin high, even a little bit past the pin, it might spin back. Not much there right now, man. Hardly a breath of wind. It is perfect scoring conditions. For him and for Talk, a double there sends him back to five under par. Well, DJ, can he come back with something uh, to answer that wonderful shot from Cameron Smith? He's got a clean line in the bunker. It won't be an issue. It's a perfect pin for him. A little cut back into the slight breeze. Oh, I miss hit it. Yeah, he did. That's not it could be awkward enough from there. Pat Perez for his birdie at the second. He holds that. He's counting. 23 under for the four aces. Seven shots ahead of Smash. I like coming down just left for a little bounce to the right. Yeah. DJ hit a pitching wedge, and I think it's the same club for you, like. Chance for you, line to get it to eight under. I can get him both. Kevin now with a short one for birdie out at two. There we go. There we go. Well, the iron heads of the four aces were dueling on the final day in Boston. There's 19 shots between them on the final day here in Chicago. Richard Bland with his third at the seventh hole, the par five. Teammate Laurie Cantor at the tenth. DJ's third, Bubba. Yeah, this is a tough shot here. A little on the down slope, tight lie. He's got some room to work with. Just got to catch it so clean and so crisp that puts a little check on it.
almost got too much on it. It was uh, not the mistake you'd expect to see. Jana there with the birdie. The birdie at 12 a few moments ago for Sergio Garcia to get a five under par. Resplendent in yellow shorts or lime green shorts. They're pretty bright nonetheless. They are. Gets a big bounce forwards there. Wasn't looking for that. Back to Cam for Birdie to extend that lead, Dom. Well, I don't know if he meant to leave it short right at this pin with his second shot. If he did, he's got some serious control over his game at the moment because he's left himself a spot where it's very makeable. Slow coming up the hill. Moving slightly from right to left. That little smash of the bag with his club on the sixth seems to have done the trick. That's all it took, Dom. I would have been in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> no, I would have been right behind you. Looks good. Has he hit it? No. Uphill. Birdie at two. This is the par three, number three. Well, back at the ninth, DJ's going to make this one. This is for par. Just a little. He can smash it though and go ahead and get it there. Don't want two bogeys in a row. Got it. Oh. Big moment. Anywhere but there. All of a sudden the lead is four. Momentarily, U line has a chance to. Get it to eight short range and switch positions with DJ. Already cancer for birdie at ten. Oh. Oh. Stingers are in third place. This is Brandon Grace for birdie. That'll help enormously. Just, we just saw the fireballs very briefly in third place after Sergio Garcia's birdie. But it's a stinger and a, a talk and punch. And we're chasing smash in the four aces. It's Peter Uline. Slippery. Wow. Oh, second place solo right now for Peter Uline. Three back. Patrick Reed. Trying to stay halfway in touch here. This is for par. Oh, no. Oh. It's tense. Cam Smith leading the pylon by four. The four aces are in pole position for a four peat. We have nine holes to go at the Live Golf Chicago Invitational. Oh. 
the solo challenge of golf. Being alone in your own head. Even for the best in the world, you must be mad. It's just you. You versus the ball. You versus the force. Not quite good enough. You win, good for you. That's what you're supposed to do. What a moment! You lose, look in the mirror. Because that's on you. But the idea of team play in golf, now that's a game changer. Absolutely phenomenal. Take it from me. Being on a team can be pretty rewarding. This weekend, the best teams in golf are in my town, Chicago. Home of the greatest dynasty in sports. Is there a new dynasty in golf? I know one thing. Everyone's coming for the champs in Chicago. Just the way I like it. Beautiful day at Rich Harvest Farms, 50 miles outside of downtown Chicago, 81 degrees on Championship Sunday, sunshine, blue skies, it is gorgeous out there. I'm Arlo White alongside Jerry Fox, David Fairhitty in the booth, Don Belay, Sue Ann Heng, Troy Mullins and Bubba Watson are out on the course for us. And we're overlooking the 18th. There's pandemonium behind us, chaps, at the moment. I don't know whether you can see on, on your screens there because Phil Mickelson has just walked past the booth yeah. and thousands of people are, are uh, chasing Phil and watching actually, Phil. Here it is. He actually hit a shot right next to our well, booth there we off go. the card path. you got to love him, don't you? This is about 30 seconds ago, maybe a minute. And there's just a... A swathe of humanity following him down to the 18th green as we speak. Not a bad shot, actually. Yeah, pretty good shot from there. Shit, they <laughs> loved it. Yeah. The individual competition, we'll talk teams in a moment. Um, Cam Smith is, is slowly taking control because Dustin Johnson just can't find his form from Friday. Yeah, well, they had that spell around the turn there. Cam Smith made that amazing putt on seven after fluffing the chip. And then Dustin, uh, you know, drops a couple of shots. Peter Uline, you know, jumping into the picture as well. You said that early in the day, yeah. too. You yeah. picked him out. You said you hadn't seen him swing this well. Yeah. But he's getting it done against some heady competition. Yeah, for sure. Four aces um, looking to four Pete, and they lead by five from Smash and Stinger. Five teams within three shots of the podium as well. So the four aces are in top spot and looking to uh, secure another title. But let's take a look at some of the highlights so far today. Charles Schwartzel for Stinger. That was for Birdie at the first. He was our inaugural champion in London. His captain for Stinger is Louis Oosthuizen. This was for Birdie at four. He would just about make it. Drops into the hole. And Stinger are 14 under at the moment in third place. Eight off the lead. Four aces, Patrick Reed leading the way, his third at the seventh here. His score counting today, and that would make it as well. Three of the four scores count in the individual, so Taylor Gooch, who is not really in contention for once in the individual competition, this was for Birdie at 13, his score counting, and surprisingly at the moment, Dustin Johnson's score is not counting, but this was for Birdie at seven, and the Majestics are not out of it. My old man will be happy back in the East yeah. Midlands. This was for Birdie at seven. And the Majestics, one of those five teams within three of the podium. So in terms of the team race, can you see past the four races once again, Jerry? And if, if so, can anyone challenge them? It's just kind of amazing. This is our fifth live event and likely going to be the fourth win for the four races. I just think... Pat Perez is someone I like. I've known him for a long yeah. time. This is a kind of a rebirth of his professional career. This year, 
he's going to have his best year as a professional golfer in seven events played. Yeah, it's wonderful to see it. But it's still, it's five shots is the lead at the moment. And we saw those disappear in the space of two holes we back did. in Boston. So, I mean, you never know. Stay tuned Suspense. wherever you are around the world. Let's send it out to our team on the ground. Bubba Watson is with Don Boulay. Chaps, take it away. Bubba, I'm out here walking the fairways with you. I can't believe the number of people who are shouting your name. When you were playing, how did you deal with that sort of a distraction? How did these guys deal with it? You know, I, I think you have to, like Phil Mickelson, you, you, you fire, it fires you up. It gets you excited. You know, there is moments and days, I wrote a book about it, that I have some low moments where I don't take it that way. Uh, but today, I mean, there's nothing but cheers telling me to get better. Uh, can't wait to see you out here. So you have to take it and, and try to draw off of that so you can make some putts or make some good shots. No real fireworks from this leading group. Can you see the other two, DJ and Peter Uline, reeling Cam Smith in today? Well, what I was, I was seeing so far is that Peter is um, he's not scared of them because they're not, like, firing on all cylinders. And so he's right there with them. Um, nine holes to go. Anything can happen. Thank you. Yeah. Over to you, Troy. Thanks, Dom. I had the pleasure of watching Lori Cantor and Charles Schwartz will start the day. They're playing a little bit of a catch and release game. They get a birdie, they lose one, and so they've remained even at six under. And now I'm watching Patrick Reed, who is the current leader in the four aces group. Um, but you know, he's hitting more greens in regulation. He started the day on hole five, which is his great stretch of holes. And as we've seen in round one and round two, the back nine for him might give him a little bit of trouble. So we'll see if he can help the four aces win their fourth win. Sue Ann? Well, I have to say, the biggest surprise for me is the fact that the Aussies are not giving the Americans a run for their money. I really thought the Aussies would turn up today and just put some pressure on the four aces. I can certainly sense a, a, a little bit of frustration and maybe even some disappointment uh, walking with Matt Jones. And uh, you know what? I know the gap's a little bit big right now, but you just never know with nine to play, three scores that count. You just cannot say never uh, also on a side note can we all dare david faraday to go and get a mullet today oh, come please on. come on that's come not on. a that's not a hair do <laughs> that's a hair don't <laughs> <laughs> oh there have been some terrific moments in the opening nine holes and the crowds have flocked. Ooh, that's a, that oh, that's a good one. Oh, that, that was a mullet champion that hurt that was that was a beauty it's a no contest Rich Harvest Farms has been a terrific venue. It's an enormous property, a big golf course. Dustin Johnson, Patrick Reed, Taylor Gooch, and the four aces. Swap count Smith. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was one of the funniest moments on the live golf circuit so far. David, you swatting poor Alf out of the sky. I heard that drone. <laughs> we'll have to. Playing off the path by our commentary box, and that was Phil's third at 18. Cam Smith out at 10, drove it in the fairway bunker. This his shot second goes. shot. Looks like a clean lie. Just have to catch it. Ball first. One, two grains of sand, it seems like. Just throws it all into a tizzy, but you thin it and you pay a price. Oh, little blowback there. What a shot. Yeah, what a wonderful shot. Just doesn't look like he's going to make many mistakes. And if he does... He looks like he's going to recover from them. Yeah. Dustin from the fairway. Oh. Tried maximizing the spin on that one. Oh, yes. That helps. Landed on a down slope and still hit the brakes. Still stunned it. Lucky Neiman is trying to inspire the talk team onto the podium for the first time. He moved to five under with that birdie. Stay in Chile and the celebrations continue. 
this 18th of September we follow Wako Neiman from Chile go Joaquin thank you for joining us that's a nice setup there by the way mm -hmm. I'm in yeah Live Golf Santiago has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Ooh, I've never been to Chile before. No, I'd love to go. Phil, after the second shot off the path, which was literally about six feet from the <laughs> portalette outside of our booth, to the back of the green, chipped it to hear this for a birdie. Is Peter you line over at the 10th that oh. is that is way offline I'll tell you what happened he drove it over towards the 15th tee the ball landed in a golf cart oh. and it was driving away <laughs> <laughs> was it yours Dom you no, could no. at least drive towards the hole no, this wasn't my car for once back in the field of play but that's on the dance floor with miles from the band well you just saw chase kepka move up the pylon to six under par and this is how he did it and in terms of the kepka brothers he is outshining brooks here in chicago Beautifully done by Chase. He is five under today, six under overall, and Smash are within four of the four aces all of a sudden. <laughs> Matthew Wolf on the tee at 16 or 13. Lovely shot. Over at the 15th, Patrick Reed with a little stubby chip here. He'll be trying to make this one. down to four shot lead now for the four aces as Arlo said tightening up you guys are right you added the suspense David yeah I've already given it to him you never know no In this team department that's James Pyatt for birdie at six nice <laughs> Louis Oosthuizen on the tee at 16 Kick toward the hole. Yes, please. This is a pro football Sunday. That's a nice. Uh, we got two TVs on the football, and Sue Ann and Cameron White on the other one. Cameron Smith, excuse me. Awesome. Eugenio Chikara on the eighth green. Yeah. And that's birdie. Yeah. Haven't seen much of Tringali today. This for birdie out at six, David. He's got the legs. Dollars. <laughs> and the socks. Try to detect a hint of sarcasm, perhaps. <laughs> You line, uh, ooh, you know the car, the ball, the drive took a ride in the cart. He could use an Uber from here, Dom. Yeah, that'll be about a fifty-dollar ride too. It's some serious real estate he's got to cover, and this green, like the fourth, baked out. So tough to judge the speed. There's no friction there. Yeah. Well, he's got it coming back up the hill at least. Looking for something positive. There's Lee Westwood over at the 12th. He's got a little tree in his way, but nothing too bad. He's got a short iron in, so plenty of loft. Whole location today back left. 
definitely do not want to be long here. Ideally, you want to be sort of bottom left, the bottom right of the hole. Right at it. And, uh... Well, don't blink. We got highlights of Paul Casey. That's third was from at the 18. Yeah. The Charles Conway mine for six. At 16 for birdie. Graham McDonald, the Ulsterman, at the first. This for birdie. Helping the cliques move up to nine under par total. Even on the round as a team, not getting it done. Cam Smith, on the other hand, is getting it done as we have expected. This now out at 10 for birdie. Yeah, and he's seen just how fast this is past the hole. A good effort just to get this one there, having seen that. Expected it to break a little more to the right. Thunderstorms predicted and lots of rain, right? Just about sunset today, and these greens are going to love it because they mm -hmm. need it. They've been thirsty for the week. Par, Dom, you line. Yeah, coming back up the hill. Wow, DJ must have had a great second. We were a little bit late coming here after a half time piece. That's a big park where well, everyone is. Back nine on a Sunday. Good positive yeah. stroke from you line. It's been very impressive this last couple of days. Walking Neiman out of 13. This to get up to a tie with Dustin Johnson for now at seven under. Captain of Talk, who are in third place. in Chile on Independence Day and he is level with Dustin Johnson on seven under and talk are clear in third this to get back to eight under yes the big fella <laughs> tapping for birdie for Louis Oosthuizen Grant McDowell in the fairway at two par five second shot it's gone for the pleats on the front of the shorts who really? crease no, oh, the please, crease yeah. excuse me yeah. well they, some of them come like that well that that suggests that maybe he sent it away for dry cleaning at his hotel that's how they often come back unless you stress otherwise in my experience well, you said hotel. I'm more used to the motel treatment. <laughs> I've got a couple of pairs of shorts at home that if I, uh, my legs, I've lost so much weight in my advancing years that I can take two or three paces before they start to move. <laughs> <laughs> Fill it one. They could double up as a marquee if you want to throw a party, David. Mm -hmm. Yes. You haven't got to your advancing years yet, David. I'm past you. Uh, yeah, let me adjust. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry is catching up. Ooh, Lee Westwood. Good effort there. Schwartzel has this for birdie at 11. Just to the side of the flag. That didn't drop. He stays at six under. Look at the view of the tee at 11. 
at Serpentine Fairway. Completely isolated back there. You know, it's kind of eerie. Yeah. Hey guys, she needs to get past you guys. Right? Almost waiting for shoeless Joe Jackson mm -hmm. to emerge. Stumbling out of the weeds. Well, 626 yards is uh, a little more than a third of a mile. And chances are Dustin Johnson can get there. It's if back he, into the wind today. Well, if he hails this one, maybe, Bubba. Maybe. No, no, probably not from there. <laughs> no. I'm not sure if that's spinach or carrots or what it is. Bryson DeChambeau is moving up the pile on this for his birdie at the 12th. He is the captain of the Crushers and he is now six under par. The Crushers just two off the podium. He can get there if he finds the fairway. Picked Smoke up the that quickly. One. Pat Perez. This is at the fourth a little earlier. That can't get there, can it? Can't get there. Almost. If you build it, he will come. I always thought it was they will come. Yeah, so did I. You know, I was corrected on that the other day myself. I'm going to go out on a limb again and say he can't get there into. Hope to be proven wrong. Would it be uh, would it be a spoiler of a movie that's over well, almost 30 years old if you revealed who he actually was no it was I his father it was. wasn't it in oh, field yeah. of dreams yeah build it and he will come was his father who was played by burt lancaster was it that no that was a different character ah. that was the character that had i think one major league baseball appearance but didn't have an at bat we have no clue. Oh. all right suan watching bryson help us save us please yeah I have to say, I don't think any of the Bryson fans this week have seen any of the greens. They all just rushed to the tee box <laughs> to watch the guy smash a shot. And why wouldn't you? I would. It's pretty impressive. Hasn't got that putter working today, though. Only one under par on the round. Not that the scores are all that low, but. Brian Ziegler there with a compass hanging around his neck. You don't find too many caddies with a compass. It could be a barometer in his back pocket. You never know with uh, with Bryson. Is it his moral compass? Mm. Yeah, you got a good point there, Jerry, with the uh, scores that are not really reflective of the scoring conditions. I had a good chat with Matt, Matt Jones, and he said, you know, it's just the greens are really firming up, and the hole locations today are super tricky. So that's why... Scoring isn't that low. It's playing a little tougher. Westwood now, husband of the year, after the elevator ride with his <laughs> wife and gifting her a microwave Woo! oven after a big win. Well, to top it off, he doesn't pay her either. Uh, sorry. She gets, instead of 10%, she gets 100%. <laughs> Good shot there below the green, Patrick Reed. Phil for birdie over at the first. Yes, catches the right edge and falls in sideways. To the tee at the fifth. And Perez studying this. Two under today for Matt Perez. His score currently counting. Remarkably still. It's Dustin Johnson who's the outlier for the four aces. 
Level par for the day. His score isn't counting. You hit that nine pretty good yesterday. It flew 159. Five, 158? Yeah. I fucking killed that. Plus, that also had wind. I don't think it wind. The breeze has almost died at this moment. Right here at 18, the flags are hanging limp. Okay. Normally, Pat Perez could have hit a bucket of balls in the time it took him to decide which club to hit here. Just violently fast from there. Joaquin Neiman at the 14th. The second shot. Fortunate not to get a kick forwards there. DJ's laid up. Dom Cam next to play. Yeah, DJ's laid up into a good spot, according to Bubba. He saw it. I didn't. Cam's 292-ish to the front edge of the green. It's a tight pin on that right side. It's actually not the easiest layup. Here at 11, there's a lot of cabbage around the place. And that, uh, it's not the best angle to come in from. This is uh, Westwood and Deschambeau overlooking their puts here on the 13th, Suan. Yeah, they both hit great iron shots into the screen. Absolutely great scoring conditions out here. Not a breath of wind right now. And as I spoke before, I had a chat with Matt on the green before, and he said, we were really hoping that it would be windier today because the Aussies are just a bit more comfortable playing in the wind. With the scoring conditions not quite blowing the way it was yesterday. I think it's kind of played towards their disadvantage, actually. He was also checking in on his teammate, Cameron, seeing where he was on the leaderboard. Brooks captain for Eagle at 18. Currently not counting on his team. Actually, be tied with Cobra to be counted. Yeah, looks like the Aces are about to drop a shot here. This is Taylor Gooch at the fourth, his fourth shot. So he'll drop at least one. Back to 13 and Deschambeau, Suan. He's starting to roll the ball pretty well the last couple of holes. He made the long one on the 12th. This one pretty straightforward. Got a good read from Lee. Such an interesting setup, isn't it? Not much moving. Just rocks his shoulders. Oh. Uh, almost went right. Patrick Reed to say par at 16. Little sticky patch here for the four races potentially, but Patrick Reed does his job. We shall see if Taylor Gooch can follow suit. Charles Howell the third for birdie at the par 5, 11th. He is two over today. His score is not counting for the Crushers as it stands, but they're in a tie for third place. Matt Jones, it's not been Team Punch's day so far, but that was his second at the 12th. 
And James Pyatt, even for the competition, walks this one in, then hesitates and then continues the walk. That was for birdie at six for the Niblicks, yeah, yeah. who were down Correct. in 11th more place. Than, it's more than that on from this angle. See, see the red number here? And then we got four or five more from there. Okay, so Well, there's an opportunity here for Dustin Cameron Yeah, Smith absolutely. Too. I think that club's perfect. It's going to find it difficult to get it close from where he is. At least you would think so. Hair short. And Dustin just not firing in all cylinders. This is for birdie at seven for Chase Kepka. Still having a terrific day though, Chase, five under for the day, and Smash are three off the lead now held by the four aces. And that's a look at what uh, Cameron Smith has, virtually no green to work with here, and the flag lying kind of limp. The wind has almost disappeared. Maybe a lull before the storm that's forecast for this evening. See the club face wide open here. You're right, David, it's virtually disappeared, but what there is will help him just a little bit, just enough to make the shot not as hard as it appears. Slices underneath it. Oh, what a wonderful shot from there. We saw a couple of those yesterday as well. Just a magician. So this is Gooch for bogey. Oh, that's a double for Taylor Gooch. His score now not counting. But this is a birdie put here at five for Pat Perez. His teammate for the four aces. And suddenly, the lead is only two over Smash. Birdie opportunity at 14 for Louis Oosthuizen, captain of Stinger. Oh, about it and drops. Little lead back and a wave to the crowd for Louis. David, your nose is getting a little active over there. Yes. You know, I did uh, predict a playoff early in uh, in the week. A team playoff, that was, but... Uh, Peter Uline. Oh! Well, you're one for one on your predictions. That was just a blind guess. Well, at the moment, it looks like the four aces against Smash for the team title. But look at the race for third as well. Still eight to play for the... Mm the leaders group and remember they teed off second the only group to tee off second on a tee so just most of the players with seven to play and just beneath stinger on 14 under you've got the fireballs 13 under the high flyers are 12 under majestics are 11 under far from out of it in terms of a podium finish at least here Joaquin Neiman, a birdie over at 14. Oh. Oh. Nobody throwing up that really low round today. But Chase Kepka is low on the course, isn't he? Five under par for the day. Sergio at 15 for birdie. Five balls are right in the mix. We were saying yesterday, he won in four different decades. Sergio, a remarkable career. How many continents are under? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. 
Good try. Peter Uline. Yeah. It's a birdie for Peter Uline. And the gap is two. For the individual in the team, the gap is one. That was eight strokes about, what, 45 minutes ago or so. Four races are being reeled in gradually by Smash. Let's get it to 12 under for Cam. I can't tell you how good Peter Uline's third was. It was a lot harder than Cam Smith's. Wonderful up and down. That wasn't too bad, though, either. Cameron Smith goes to 12 under a lead of three over Peter Uline early this week. He spent some time with our own Troy Mullins on the practice putting green. Cam Smith, champion golfer of the year. Sounds good, doesn't it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> So can you talk to us about your routine and your setup with your putting? I saw you do something. You did something with your shoulder, which I've never seen. For me, when I'm practicing at home and here, I always, my first probably 20 putts are with uh, the mirror. Okay. And I just make sure everything's square, basically. Get a nice straight putt. Um, and it's just, it's just basically like a checkup. The reason why I was doing that before was because my shoulders were really open, so. That's my tendency. Basically, my shoulders, my shoulder planes aiming left of the target where I like everything when I'm putting to just be perfectly square. And then how do you use the mirror? Like, what are you looking at? I don't want to see my left eye in this mirror. I want my left eye to be directly over the ball. And then I want my right eye to be directly on the red line here. And then my two shoulders along this blue line here. So that's kind of a, which is a good checkup every morning. You know, it's nice to have the same thing going in every day. You can only imagine that the first thought that Cam has when he leans over the mirror is, boy, my hair looks good. Yeah, <laughs> in the mirror, yes. yes. Right, this one, how firm it is and how uh, warm it is. Yes, sir. Fine with 52. Yes, sir. Yep. Oh, okay. Jonesy. The Australian. On the 14th okay. hole. It is very noticeable about these players on the live golf circuit how relaxed they are in front of the cameras yeah and it speaks a lot as well to how relaxed they feel with troy and with suan and with dom as well but their personalities are really shining through well they feel like they're in this together part of something new something different This is the left lip. Wow. Right, decision time for our leaders group at 12. We need to get to this. So it's two, 259 up to 261 there. That's a drastic difference in the layup versus <laughs> staying aggressive. Yeah, we you know, get the take our, just take it on the chin. Yeah, because the pin's in the back left today. Yeah. So we need it to go basically 260. A little help fly max 240. Yeah. And we're looking for 20 a roll, which isn't quite enough. I agree. So I'd like to finish on that trunk just left of the bunker. Okay. It's perfect. My travails with golf carts continue. Now I've got a flat tire. <laughs> really? Yep. Stick to my legs. Oh, Peter Yulan going with the old chicken stick. Rather than the driver, it's a low... Stick hook, hooky looking thing. 
Here's how the team lead was reduced to a stroke. This was an eagle put on 18 for Brooks Kepka, who's reawoken. That was good enough for a birdie. And Taylor Gooch, double bogey at four. And then for smash, Peter Uline, a birdie put at 11. So the team lead for the four aces, who we remember are trying to four-peat here in Chicago, is only one stroke. Brooks Kepka's score, even today, now counting for smash. And team punch with our leader Cam Smith are now tied for the podium third place yes, on, yes DJ. Oh. 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 Wood from Cam that gets past the corner he'll have a clean look at the green I believe but fans are happy now Bubba DJ's going with the big stick yeah, I think DJ's trying to make something happen. Um, he cuts it back against this win, so he can make something happen here. Hits his driver like he wants. It's a gigantic oak tree. He's just knocked that over the right edge of it. Seemed happy with it. Yeah. Yep. We shall see. DeChambeau now second shot at 14, just a few moments ago. What a great effort. What a great shot from the rough. He's wondering if it's in. He'd be happy enough to see how close it is. I hope you've seen the uh, the rope there. Oh, 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 oh garroted oh. off with his head. He's all right. Standing eight count now. <sighs> Might have just caught him in the eye. Well, we hope that he's okay. Patrick Reed drove it in the bunker at 17. This is his third shot at the par four. in danger of dropping a shot. <laughs> oh, dear. Oops. Oh, Bryson yeah, caught him in the right eye there. That's, uh, That'll sting. Yeah. Seems all right. It's going to take a while for that eye to clear up. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it won't scratch anything. This is Lori Cantor on the tee at number 13. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to be good. Very solid tournament so far for Lori Cantor, who previously finished 17th, 37th, 26th, and tied for 21st. So, Lori there in a tie for fifth place. Is this to tie the lead for smash in the team competition? It is. 21 under par for team smash. Brooks Kepka has reawoken on the back nine on the final day. Level with the four aces on 21 under. Usti. With a beauty. That is a beautiful shot. Four aces, Pat Perez. It's like the four aces need a challenge, don't they, in the closing oh, holes? Yeah. And uh, history suggests they then wake up. It's like a dose of smelling salts to a, an ailing boxer on the ropes. And then they they pull clear. Let's see if that happens again here in Chicago. It's all kind of a gentle slope up there, isn't it? Yes. Sure. Yes, 101. Heavy? Yeah. 
Well, as layups go, that was a pretty good one. Clear shot in. Only five paces behind this pin. I, I would imagine he's going to come up three or four paces short here. There's no need to to go right at this pin. He just hit it a little too hard. It comes off a little hot. Back of the green is dead. Over the back. shorter than he wanted it maybe but it's all right bright and early in singapore monday morning but thoroughly uh, enjoying live golf chicago and the always excellent dulcet tones of don boulet who has a flat tire we'll keep you updated on that bryson de chambeau uh, this for birdie to go to seven under after that unfortunate incident with the rope hasn't put him off He's seven under. It's good news for the crushers as well. Horrible spot. Ooh. Played it pretty well. He's played he it did. pretty well. Oh, he what did. a shot. What a shot. That's a wonderful effort from there. Had to keep it low below the bars of that big hickory tree in front of him. Very difficult to judge the pace. He did that superbly. It wasn't a very nice lie, I can assure you. Spots a bother for Chase Kepka, who is oh, five under today. This that is was third of the eighth, wasn't it? That was fat. That's going to hurt the team a lot. Back to the green at 12. And was it Dustin next? Baba. Yes, it's it is Dustin next. He's got about a 45 footer for Eagle. Aha, drove the green. He drove it on the green. Wow, what a shot. Yeah, you, you can grab it. I had a little chat with Austin and DJ while we were waiting and um, they talked about how impressive Cam Smith's short game is, especially out of the rough. Check back in with uh, Chase Kepka. This Man, he sure has made a bit of a mess on this hole, and the mess continues. Oh. This is going to mm. hurt the team so bad. Got to make that from off the green for bogey. Meanwhile, Patrick Reed to save par at 17. The wheels are coming off for both the four aces and smash. Maybe talk on out of it. Maybe punch on out of it. The crushers have a bit of momentum now as well. Yeah, it's going left of the cam's coin here and then it's leaking a little right the rest of the way. No. Got to think DJ's just trying to two putt this and start that moment. Yeah, started like kind of left edges and it gets out there just inside Pete's coin yeah, and then. No, no, not at all. for Dustin Johnson and see what Cam Smith can come up with. He has answered the call so far, asking a lot from some 30 or 35 feet short of the hole. 
Patrick Reed, sorry, Patrick Perez. That's the sixth. Back to 12. Cam Smith. The team leaderboard on the right hand side has Smash in the lead, but that's before Chase Kepka finishes off for at least a bogey. Yeah, Perez in a little trouble too. looks from here Jed Morgan is the hero today for team talk he's four under on the day Ooh. that was for birdie and talk are clear in third they're not out of it they're only five shots behind smash now what can Chase Kepka do here to limit the damage was not an easy shot either to take quite a big swing for a 15 foot long shot you line now boy he can make a birdie from that position he'll be amped up Oh. Oh. Perez for par at the sixth. Mm. Oh, that's oh, good stuff. Done. Yeah, and good and stuff from vital, Patrick. Vital as well. Four aces back in the lead after the travails for Chase Kepka. They lead by a shot. Talk our third four off the lead. Soft. Hang on. Soft. Somehow. Oh. They roasted it. Uh, it's a squirrel killer. You can play that. Don't worry, Reed. Right. Cam Smith. Clean up work. Right in the center, as always. Six to play for Cam Smith, and his lead is three. Cameron Tringali for birdie at eight. Matthew Wolf here at the 16th. Westwood. Official prediction out of you, David. What? What? How's this going to end? 
What's your, Carl, what's your nose? I, I still, you know, think that we're going to see our first team playoff. <laughs> yeah. Which, Jerry, would involve what? The captain selects two players from his team after the competition in the scoring tent, most likely, and they go out and play off aggregate total of the two balls, sudden death against their opponents. If more than two teams tie, we could have up to four teams playing in the same group. If it mm -hmm. were to be that way, an eight some. It's a lot of balls, golf balls to keep track of on what would be the 18th hole if there is no individual playoff. It's like it's seared into your brain, isn't it? Very impressive. I don't read like, much, but that one I read. Like your Hertz rental car card number. You can just recall that at yeah. will. Yeah. Your, your Hilton honors. Yeah. 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 Your credit card. Yeah. It's very impressive. Well, they all get a lot of use. But you can't remember what you had for breakfast yesterday. No. DJ off the tee at 13. Wants that to sneak right touch, not much. Look at that. Dustin Johnson maybe on the way back. <laughs> Elk. <laughs> Uh, it'd be a lucrative position, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. And the guy could contribute. He could flat out strike a golf ball. Yes, he can. He's got a seven eye in his hands. Just follow DJ. Pretty much following DJ. Uh, two lovely shots there. Johnson, the new line tied uh, three shots behind this man. Like, he has to give him a little something dramatic has to happen for Cam to be caught. Yeah, 16 he, and 17 are tough holes. Yeah, those are ahead still. 18 he, he has answered days. every yeah. challenge so far. It's a little disappointed in Boston to come so close and not get it done. Green. Put that short game to test one more time. He's been a magician with it all week long. I don't watch But it got the hole Patrick Reed second at 18. Seems every time the four aces feel the footsteps behind them, they turn on the afterburners and they've re-established a two-shot lead, but that could be trouble for Patrick. What can Brooks do here for Team Smash? His third shot at the second. Almost up. Is that all? Into the fringe. Oh, that's a very good effort from there. Stop. It did. Out for birdie. To reduce the four races lead to one. Ooh, no fun here for DeChambeau at 15. Bucking oh, Neiman at the 16th. This for Birdie. First place acers, they are in third place. Podium finish if it ended as it is right now. <laughs> this could help smash here, Arlo. Absolutely. To close the gap on the four races to a single shot. On the closing holes here, Brooks Kepka started right and carried on.
Fireballs still have a chance of making the podium again. This is their captain, Sergio Garcia, his second shot at 17. That's in the range. All right, Dom, what's Cam looking at? It's a perfect lie. It's going to be a, a little chunk and runner, this one, because everything runs towards that pin once it lands on the green. He's got this shot, we all know that. But there's a lot of pressure out here now, especially after those two tee shots from the other two. For a two shot swing, a couple of them. Now look at the impact here. He went pretty close to the ball there. It wasn't quite the. There was too much run and not enough chunk. Lori Cantor. Trying to send one in at 14. Oh! We use stays it for birdie at 16. Right oh. Got robbed, dude. Two under today for Louis, six under overall, and Stinger at 14 under are only two off the podium. All right, Dustin here, Bubba, to put apply a little bit of heat to Cam. Yes, for sure. And like I said earlier in the day, he gets on these momentum runs. That two putt helped him out a lot. Beautiful swing here. Meanwhile, at 18, his teammate Patrick Reed, third shot, par five. Oh. All right, how good is he on the greens? All right, Dustin now, Bubba. Yeah, they're still looking at it. You know, they really need this one because they know that's a two-shot swing, has a chance for a two-shot swing. Downhill, little breaker falling to the right there. Are you going to go to that? How's that feel? All right. Say this is a must make, put pressure on them. Oh. Oh. Just been a fraction tentative the last couple of days. Well, we're reaching the closing stages of another excellent weekend of live golf here in Chicago. Sean Norris of the Stingers, second shot at the sick hole as it stands at the moment. Stinger are two off the podium. And Oban Lahiri. The birdie at 16, the Crushers going okay. James Pyatt, his third shot at the seventh. He is one under for the tournament. A member of the Niblix team, Phil Mickelson for birdie at two. And Phil is three under par. Well, another huge putt here for Cameron Smith. He's knocked these in with monotonous regularity. It seems from the Open Championship until now, he seldom misses from this distance. We shall see. amazing well chase kepka was it a double bogey on the previous hole this is second shot at nine and this is significant for smash
his teammate Peter Uline to get to within two of Cam Smith. David, I would suggest he's been knocking those in since Hawaii at the beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Well, this is a big one too. Peter Uline represent the biggest threat to Cam Smith here in Chicago. He's two back. Third shot for Pat Perez here at the seventh. That's going to be difficult not to give it at all to try and save par. Boy, would Chase Kepka like to put this one away for birdie. Yeah. Two back. Team smash. Captain by his brother, Brooks, on the tee of three. coming down to it for the team title it as really we is. expected yep yeah, and they know they're paying attention here's your old mate alf again david yep and the 14th shares the tee with the sixth little downhill dog leg from left to right nicely bunkered in front there's one behind the flag here as well You've got to hit the fairway you're not on Alf's Christmas card list David by the way after that incident earlier on yeah you got I to know, make I'm it sure up not, to... not very popular <laughs> well, with, with this front pin I suggest laying further back what club has he got chaps it right, sounds like yeah that's driver tried it in a little low uh, stinger fade and overcooked it. Very, very hard to get it close from there. You get it on the green. All right, DJ. Next, what are we going with here? Fairway wood, Bubba. Yeah, this could be the nine wood. It looks short. Yeah, he said it's a seven iron length nine wood. Trying to come up short of that bunker. It's the lowest nine wood I've ever seen. Just in the rough. Settle down. So Pat, can Patrick Reed get the four aces back clear by two? He certainly can. Cameron Tringali to get back into the top ten on the individual pylon. He does that. He's five at the par as well. Back with our leader, Cam Smith. Just an iron here, Don. An iron. That's that's a good play. But he must find the fairway, as David said. You're in the rough. You're not going to get close to this pin. Yeah. Yeah, the only one of three in the short grass. Pat Perez must get it up and down here for the team. And number seven. And he'll have that one to do it. Ooh. Schwartzel at 15. Stinger are two back from the podium. They're tied for fifth at the moment. It is a three-way tie with the high flyers and talk. It's a game of musical chairs here at the moment. When the music stops, who is going to be first, second or third in the team contest? It's uh, out at the fourth hole. This and three more to play for birdie. Nice. 
Don't count out the high flyers. They are one back of punch. There you go, the high flyers led by Phil Mickelson are 15 under par. And you know that Phil knows. Hunter, his second shot. Into 15 and a beauty. Well, we await our winner in the individual competition here in Chicago. But in the team contest, it's really hot. You know, Mark Leishman, his third at the par five second. He would make his birdie for the punch team. Chara Conwa by for birdie at the second. Nicely done. Jason Kokrak could yet help smash despite being level for the day and not counting right now. This is second at 17. Matt Jones for punch, this for his birdie at 15. He's three under overall, and punch are in third place. They're six behind the four aces who lead the way. They're one ahead of the crushers at the moment on the podium. Any breeze is sort of quartering and off the right. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! With the swing, with the shot. Yep. Heavy. Coming down on. Perfect. Comes up a touch shy and well, shouldn't be too much of a problem, depending on the lie. Cameron's hometown of Brisbane. Got a few fans there. They've been awarded an Olympic Games, David. Mm -hmm. I think after Los Angeles. Smash have got to within one of the four aces, and this is how they did it. Brooks Kepka for his birdie at the third. Into the shadow, into the sunlight, into the shadow, and into the hole. This is going all the way. Oh, wow. that Pat is Perez. Oh. That's strong at number seven. That was for par. Yep. That maintained the one-shot lead. That was huge for the four aces. Oh, great shot from Louis Westhausen. at the difficult 17. Not as bad as we first thought. The lie's not great sitting down, but at this angle, He's just got a little bit more room to work with. He just needs to really carry it two feet past Cam Smith's ball. But if he's a little heavy-handed, it's going to run off the other side. But it's doable. Got to be on the fairway. Yuck. So dead. So dead. How would I know that who that was hard? Phil, the thrill. Get on the Phil! Get Phil! Get him! Four under today, Phil. A chance to go five under today. Schwartzel at 15 for birdie.
You line again at 14. Must get this up and down. That's not going to help. Troy Mullins out there watching Patrick Reed at number one in the left rough. Troy. It's an uphill lie. You know, he's been struggling to judge the wind. I think he finally sees that there's no wind out here and he can just go for the pin, but he doesn't want to go long here, so make sure it's not a flyer. He's got plenty of green, though. Let it run up. Come on. Don't you run out a little? God. Well judged. Yeah. Ideally, we get back up there, but. Cameron, no. Oh. Again, no mistake. Pull it. Yeah. The opportunity pull it here out, a Adrian. few moments ago for Wacky Neiman to go to seven under par. Oh. Captain of Talk, who are only two behind Punch. Charles Howe the third for birdie at 15. I don't know of any professional golfer with a lengthy career in history who has hit more good putts that haven't got in than Charles Howell. Chase Kapka with his second shot at the 10th. Tricky hole location today. It's stuck right behind that bunker. Not a lot of room at all. He's coming in with a high fade. This is looking good. Got a good look at the leaderboard on the last hole, so he knows exactly where their team is standing. And so did Cameron Tringali. All right, Dustin Johnson now at 14. Well, Dustin has got to do something right, in a hurry. Hold on to this last little section. But. Kind of pinch right through here, and then it's too late. Stays in playing a captain's innings for Stinger, moving up the pylon individually as well. To seven under par, that was his birdie, and they are level. Team Stinger for third with punch. Why, guys? As we look at uh, Peter Uline getting ready to have his play. Bubba, talk a little bit about DJ and what you've seen on the greens today. Yeah, DJ just looks like it's just the pace isn't quite there. It's being tentative. Um, ball striking's been fine. Just, the putts have just been dying off a little to the left, a little to the right. Bubba, when you're in contention coming down the stretch, a lot of people say the mind can start to race. How do you, how do you quiet it down when you're in the position that DJ's in right now? I think your caddy. I think your caddy next to you. He's chirping in your ear, trying to get you to think about other things and just focus on the good things you're doing. Not to be for you, line. That hurts punch a little bit. Or smash, excuse me. Brooks Kepka at the fourth hole. You're right. Captain of Team Smash. Okay. 
Two under on his round today. He'll have that to get it to three. Definitely a counting score. They are two back of the four aces. Well, Divot can barely take the tension. I don't think that's Divot. Oh, was that not Divot? No. Is it, is it a relation? Uh, somewhere. <laughs> Patrick Reed for 30 and 1. I'm just so competitive. I saw Kessler and Reed just over reading this putt, and I'm wondering, do you think they're just trying to make it look more difficult because Kokrak's on a similar line here? No, that's just mean. <laughs> that's big for the four aces. The uh, lead is three now. And Patrick Reed is five under for the day. The conspiracy theory, Troy. No, they, uh, he just hasn't been able to read the putt so far this year. He's working on it so hard, it's working now. But Phil Mickelson, Arlo. Fair to say, I think, Joey, that he's showing his best form of the summer so far. He started at the eighth hole here today. This is for birdie at the first. Now for birdie at the second. Huge crowds following Phil as per usual. This rolled in gently for birdie at the fourth now he's four under today so far no one is lower today and the high flyers are in contention and he's got another birdie opportunity here at five his best finish in four events is a shocking 34th Amazing. individually yeah so even the last bit you still think he goes a little right right you never I think see it. it still comes a little bit right i but, agree but not nearly as much as his first this would have the high flyers clear in third place. And we could fill into the top ten. Which is far less important to him right now than that team podium. It's been quite a few years since Phil Mickelson played college golf at Arizona State, second best school in Arizona. <laughs> He also won on the PGA Tour as an amateur while attending Arizona State. Tucson Open. But he's loving the team competition now. Well, that's delicate. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Beautiful. That's a great moment for Phil Mickelson, and he's tearing it up in the closing holes. He's on five under par, but most importantly for him, as captain, the high flyers, a third, 16 under. Four aces, counting score, Pat Perez. Oh, a beauty at eight. Now with a three-shot lead over Smash GC. DJ with driver. They hear those footsteps on Championship Sunday. Yeah. And that just kicks them into gear again, doesn't it? Look at that tee shot. Oh, that is a whopper. He tees it so much lower yeah. than most of the people. Are. Of course, he plays that left to right. Here is the hole. Straight away, Don through the trees. Water hazard on the left here. DJ has hit it at least level with that. He took that water on. Water not in play for the second shot here for these players. Cam with driver. <laughs> Within a foot of where he was aiming right there. Mm -hmm. Chase Kepka for birdie here, Sue Ann. He knows, he knows he needs this downhill left to right. Spoke with his caddy. I said, has he said anything about the team at all? Has he said anything? He goes, no. He's just trying to do his thing, play his game, stay focused, try and help the team out. Oh, and that he does. <laughs> Might not be talking about it, but he's certainly thinking about it. Well, he had that double bogey, didn't he? And he's recovered from that superbly. And he's closed, smashed within two of the four aces. It's going to come down to the 18th hole. 
you know, as birdieable and eagleable as it is. Sergio. Hello. Six under par for Sergio. Let's get caught up with Kevin Nahr, the putts are starting to drop across the golf course here in the shadows. That for birdie at seven for the Ironheads. Bernd Wiesberger, that's delicately done on the same hole for the High Flyers. Cal Kanjana for birdie at the same hole as well. Yes! <laughs> Eventually. This to get smash within one of the four aces. Brooks Kepka, Captain Kepka. Oh. Turn, but just turn too late. 23rd place out of 48 players in a regular stroke play event. Right now, the grinding meter would be a little slow normally, but he is grinding 40. for the team. It's in off the left, quarter in off the left. Yeah, and it's 52 all up. Okay, 42. What's that? 42, 43 swing. Ball going. Yep. No, not much wind. It should land like 42, 47. Yeah, the one we hit into nine was, was that flew 38. Yeah. yeah. Less than yes, I agree. Heavy? Cool, mate. Commit to that. Remember, he works in metres. 52 all up. It's 167 yards. And back pin does funnel in from the right. Left side of this pin gives you a very good look. What a tee shot. Split the fairway. Swing on it. Pat Perez for the four aces for his birdie at eight. <laughs> Pat's having a really good day. Three under today. Very much contributing to the four aces who have a three shot lead. Yeah, we're right at this target. Would have been a heart and mouth moment when his tee shot took off close to the water, but great angle now. Excitement continues, Arlo. It just can't stop it. Soon to be a two-shot lead for the four aces after that from Peter Uline. Bubba, here's Dusty. Yeah, he's got a beautiful angle. Just watched a great shot. Wedge in hand. He's got to start attacking. Looks a little deep. It's okay. Good swing. Preston wants to know if there's going to be a team playoff for his birthday today. Mm. Well, Preston, I mean, David is the expert here. He's got the crystal ball out. Yacht. Yeah, there will be, Preston. <laughs> <laughs> yacht. That's Yacht Rocket. <laughs> and that's how we stand with four to play. That lead is going to be two very shortly when Peter Uline taps in. And then you've got a three-way tie for third. Phil Mickelson is leading the high flyers surge on the final day. Never count out Stinger. Punch with Cam Smith leading the way. Talker there and thereabouts. Sergio is holding putts. They're not out of it. And nor are the crushers. There is a tiebreaker system in place to uh, yeah. just for the podium picture. Yes. For the teams. Not affecting the payout of the $5 million total or the playoff. Or the playoff. The playoffs only for first. Brooks. Oh, 
hard bunch, and that'll be a tough one from there. Chara Kongwat Mai. All right, check back in on our leaders. Camp Smith. Just a little unlucky. The grass, six inches of grass he's got to go over on the fringe is lying against him. It could just pop up. Quite a lot of grain into him. Obviously hasn't been able to clean the ball. from Cam Smith, our leader. Ian Poulter, the Majestics are three over today, so not necessarily challenging for the podium, but that was the birdie at 12. Marty Keimer, his second shot at the sixth hole for the ninth place, Cleeks. Beautifully done by the German. The Northern Irishman, Graham McDowell, rolls that one in for his birdie at six. At the moment, Graham's not counting today. Matthew Wolf's second shot at 18. It's off an enormous tee shot. Great chance for Eagle. Which will be great for the high flyers. Yes. Now, DJ got a little bit of a teach, maybe, Bubba, from Cam's. Yeah, he did. It's, it's slow. He knows it's slow, so going back up the hill going to fall a little bit to the right, but he's got to hit it hard. Left to right. I think it's definitely going up the hill. It's flattening out of the hole. Where okay. Not a must make yet, David, but feeling like it mm -hmm. for the individual. I'd like to see him hit it, you know, 18 inches, two feet past on that kind of pace. Yeah, good effort. Yeah, it's not quite good enough. Three to play for DJ. Three back. Just a little cleanup work here for Cam Smith. I don't think he's missed one of these uh, since he took <laughs> up the game. This century? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is about, no, his dad said he was centering the ball at five years old yeah. every hit, meaning just flushing it dead solid at five years old. Yeah. Three holes to play. Cameron Smith leads by two over Peter Uline by three. 
over Dustin Johnson. Let's send it down to Troy Mullins. You've got a special guest, Troy. I do. Chairman of Live Golf, Yasser. I'm so excited to talk to you. This is such an incredible event here in Chicago. The crowds are at capacity. The elite players are playing at the best of their ability. And what, do you, what have you made of this week so far? It's just an amazing week. I mean, um, if you look at the... Um, the players, the leaderboard, how um, close it is, the excitement, the fans, you guys, you're doing extremely well. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think this is just the start. And then we'll continue. Right. Well, I mean, has it exceeded your expectations or can we expect more to come? You must be so proud of oh, this Live Golf product. Definitely. We, you have to expect more. I mean, uh, Live Golf is about the perfect game, the perfect golf game. And uh, we're going to expect uh, to do way much more. Uh, this is just, you know, invitational. We're experimenting uh, so many things. But definitely next year is the real go uh, Live Golf uh, League start. And that's where you will see all the individuals competing, the um, teams competing. And that's what really, um, I think, moved the dial, is to bring in the uh, team um, play into the golf right. in a way that we haven't seen before. Well, I know somebody that's never seen it before, and they're back for their second day. Get over here, Steve. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is this a TV camera? I thought it was for me. <laughs> You're here a second day. Yeah. Can we see you at the coming events? It could be something possible. I've enjoyed myself. I wish I'd have thought of it. Great idea, great concept, you know changing lives, giving people opportunities, I think it's great. Great concept, strategy. I love it, having a lot of fun. I agree, creating opportunities, changing lives, that's what it's about, right? Back to you guys. Thank you, Troy, lovely to hear from Yasir, and also the shy and retiring Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> only Troy Mullins in her lovely way can say, get over here, Steve. <laughs> Another nice shot from Phil. Right at the flag stick. I don't think Phil wants a week off. No. Right now. All right, Keep Dustin. Keep on going. Big shot here at 16. Yeah, this is a tough pin. You have to go after it. You have to attack it because of the uh, slope on the green. It's looking good. It's got to get up a little. Yeah, Great good shot. shot. Patrick Reed with his third. At the second hole. Oh my. He was oh, way oh, over. Oh, oh boy. So close there, David, wasn't it? A couple more feet. 16, 17, the two toughest holes on the course, followed by the easiest hole on the course. Much can change still. I'll tell you what, the Chicago Bears kick off in just over two hours, but I don't think anyone's leaving. Packers are going to win anyway. Look <laughs> right, it might catch the slope. Yeah, it's going to drift away. Not an easy two putt for mortals. Pat Perez of the four aces who have a two-stroke lead, his second shot at the ninth. Fight. Fight. Oh, what a lovely kick on. Oh. Oh, he'll take that one. Yeah, he's three under today, Pat. Patrick Reed is five under, Dustin Johnson one under. They're the three counting scores for the leaders. Speaking of Patrick Reed, he's fourth at the second hole. Mm. Work to do. That is crucial right now. Leading by two over Smash. Left of that. Yep. All the way out on the sixth pole, still tons of fans of this man. Let's go five under through six holes. He's a disco fan. He'll be 
dancing at this no. goes in Phil Mickelson. No. Oh. Oh. Brooks Kepka to finish his day with a par at five for Team Smash. Yeah. Yep. So Brooks came good. Two under for the day. He was struggling early on. His score will count for Team Smash, but they still trail the four aces by two. But Reed has this for par. Keep in mind, the three to play you see is for the leaders group, and they were the only one to not tee off exactly at 12.15. So other groups are finishing or one to play. Races. No. They'll slip back to 23 under par. Smash. Have a chance. Here's Chase Kepka. Get it! Oh! Brooks want to put it in! Had it in her mouth, but the kids walked in. Back to the green at 16, Cam Smith, Dom. Yeah, he's been up and down looking at this putt, and it's desperately slow. For the first 25 feet straight up a, a steep slope. It's one of those that, you know, you hit it a little too hard, and then it flattens out. It's got too much pace on it. It could run five, six, seven feet past. It's got to be careful. I don't know if he gets nervous. He looks cooler than the other side of the pillow, this guy. That's got to go. Interesting. Well, it certainly doesn't feel like an exhibition out there. No. The competition is red hot. I think that question's been answered. Yeah. Kind of guard. Feels intense out there right now. Maybe it's just sitting next to you guys. You line next. Does it feel as intense out there as we're perceiving in here, Dom? It is. Absolutely. These guys are gunning for it. Peter Uline came off the 15th green, and you can tell. I mean, he looks relaxed, but he wants this. This is big for him. And his team. Yeah. And the crowd are into it. All right. It's a way out, but it will draw smash level with the four aces. Well, I'll tell you, he wasn't shy. Pat Perez at nine. This is for birdie. Yeah. <laughs> Don't think he's impressed. That was a missed opportunity. Chase Kapka for birdie at 11. This would tie the team lead. On its way, in it goes. He's having a splendid day. Chase Kepka and smash on level with the four aces on 23 under par. Mystic Ferdy may well have called it again. Yeah. But Dustin can ex uh, get the four aces back into the lead here, Bubba. Yeah, he's got a putt he can hit. It's a little up the hill, slightly breaking to the right, um, you know makes this puts pressure on cam and helps the team obviously oh, yeah. ah. 
there's a touch left. Got a hypothetical for you here, David. If smash get to it in a second. <laughs> Meanwhile, elsewhere, the Ironheads have been struggling for the entire competition. This is Calvin John as second to the eighth. That's one of his highlights of the weekend so far. The Fireballs, they were flirting with third at one point. They're still not out of it. A answer for Birdie at the sixth. The Fireballs are just one off the podium. And Evan Lahiri, his third shot at the second hole for the Crushers. That would be for Birdie. And they are only one shot of the podium as well. It's going right down to the wire here at Rich Harvest Farms. Cam for par. Yeah, you almost feel if this is Dustin's last chance, this putt. I would not want to rely on him missing it. He just nailed that through the break. I mean, a really good positive putt and just a little too hard, too far. This will dip a little. Yeah, look oh. at that. Yeah, it's just not fair to watch that in slow motion. No. Obviously defying gravity mm -hmm. in slow motion. Well, well, well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, so David, if Smash ends up in a team playoff, mm -hmm. Captain Brooks Kepka has to select the two players. Does he select himself as the third best score of the day or put his brother under the pressure? That's Cooker, a good question. Who's had you the know, best round today for the team? Uh huh. Well, I, I think you've got to pick Chase, given the way that he's played today. Solid. Patrick Reed, solid shot. But you line for par at 16. This is big in the individual and the team competition, and it slides by. Wow. That's a huge moment, potentially. Smash trail the four aces by one. You line trails Smith by two. DJ just finishing off here. Disappointing. Well, it's not time to go to bed, and it's not time to go to work. Wherever you are in the world, stay where you are. Well, you can take us with you, can't you, on your device, wherever you might be. This is our tightest competition yet in terms of both the individual and the team competition. Second at the second here for Sergio Garcia, the captain of the Fireballs, who themselves are only one shot behind the high flyers for third. nervous about that but that's a great chance for eagle i think it was that last violently yelled please yeah. got it up there 17 is one of the toughest holes on the golf course the par four straight away bunker on the right really not in play today players driving it up just short of this water Green that squeezes in in a kind of a sideways figure eight. DJ will be first up. Bubba? From my angle, looks like he pulled out three wood. Um, might be driver. Yeah, he's got the driver. Okay, and so it's a perfect, sets it up down the line where the fans are, cuts it back to the middle of the fairway. Hopefully have a wedge, this tuck pin. Oh, got lucky, went over it. Yeah, he's long enough to get it past that bunker, and that's on the down slope in the rough, but we can see the top of it. 
Bryson DeChambeau for birdie at 18. It's significant. It drops and it gets the crushers into a tie for third place with the high flyers. Just find the fairway. No low one. It's a little right. Yeah. Gonna carry the bunker. Not with that club. <clears throat> He's up close to the front lip too. I really don't think Uline can can get to the green from where he is. It'll be a brave attempt if he does coming over the water out of the sand Still with the two shot lead. Troy, tension mounting here in the team competition as well as the individual. You're on the green here with Patrick Reed. Oh, yeah, you know that he wants to make this or at least get par to not rock the boat with the four aces. His ball's teetering right now on the on this little bit of a ridge. So initially it's going to move right and then at the end it should tail off just to the left. But I like Reed's approach. He hit it right in the middle of the green and really just wants to, to make par. All of these screens are up with scores and it's important for him to play smart here with this team play. Come on, come on. Great no line. harm there. Maddening, though, to him. Such. Great hands on and around the greens, leaving one short like that. It's uh, audibly saying a few new phrases for David to define in his next glossary of golf. <laughs> <laughs> That's the after dark version. Of the golf. Yeah. All right, Chase Kepka now, Sue Ann alongside. He's got a little tree trouble in front of him. He's just What's taking a look to see. You know what I mean? On that left side. No, we're starting 10. I just gotta, I gotta worry about hitting enough loft. Yeah, open it, left, it opens up a little bit more of the pin. You know what I'm saying? The problem is, is it looks like I don't know if yeah. I can get it up. I mean, I have gap wedge right now wondering if I can get it up. Yeah. I mean, you think I just hit that hard fucking yeah. high swoopy yeah. one? Don't try to do too much, Dave Vanilla. No, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to make sure I cover the tree. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think if I, if I open the face on a pitching wedge, it, it kind of brings a little bit more shit in the play. Yeah, I agree. No, I like this. You're just trying to hit this one. Yeah, because I mean, fine. like, like I'd like to go left, but that, that tree, this tree right yeah. here is sticking out right in front of me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel you. Yeah, just open this up with just a fraction. Really keep the speed. What do we have? Hole 36, you said? Yeah. A little bit of help. Yep. I like it when a caddy just tells a caddy. Yep. A caddy just tells a player, pardon me, to just keep it simple. I can just feel it in this atmosphere here. Come down on, keep the speed. Chase really, really wants to help the team. It's a big shot here. Good shot. Yeah, it is a good shot. Tried to turn it a touch there, get it a little closer, but that's that's holdable. By the way, his brother Brooks drove by. Don't know if they spoke, but I'm sure they did. Nicholson with his third at the seventh. Oh, and another beauty from Phil. Puts that one away. It would send the high flyers. It would break the tie for third with the crushers. Yeah, 72 
to land 78. Yikes. That is not a good yardage from this situation. Right. So your official target's gonna be one left. 68. I mean, I know you're jazzed up a little bit and there's some help wind. Yes, it's iffy. I mean, if it's, is the eight getting over lip for sure? Yeah, it's the eight iron man. Because now you've got enough to make sure you get the height on it. Yeah. Okay, there's always the danger of trying to pick it clean and catching it just that little bit thin into the lip. This is fraught with danger. Absolutely. If he wants to win, he's got to take this on. See that one settled down. That so is nasty. Help. That's quite back there, please. Thank you. What a tee shot that was. Just put it in the perfect spot here. Nine nine. Say. Superb. Dustin digging that one out. Oh, just carries. That's a great shot. Well, it's hard to argue with that. Can't. There's no argument. It's, it's just a matter of the political system yep. that controls the the official so-called rankings. And Pat Perez with another fine second shot. Almost out of nowhere, the fireballs are into third place. Why is that? Well, captain Sergio Garcia with an eagle at the second. They are 16 under par. They're a shot ahead of the Crushers and the High Flyers. Remember, Phil has a birdie putt himself. Look at that. There's the fireballs. Sergio, five under today. That's the joint lowest round of the day so far. Here's Abance's fourth at the par five seventh. His final haul. He almost hit that with his knees. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely played. And after the superb third shot, Phil now with a great chance for birdie at seven. And if nothing more, it'll obviously move him up well inside the top ten, but mm -hmm. it'll move the high flyers into solo third. Well, it means a lot to Phil, too, just to be able to post a low number. I think Jerry, you know, he, for his pride, we all know he's still got it in him. He's got to prove it to himself. Yeah. Chikara's just made a bogey for the fireballs. The so this is now for solo third.
It's dynamite, all right. Phil Mickelson is back, everybody. The High Flyers are in third place by one shot. Phil, six under for the day so far, playing his part as captain. And Peter Uline with a really awkward one here at 17. That was just a moment ago. Really a difficult lie. I thought it was DJ next to putt for birdie, but it is Uline, Dom putting for par. He is spending some money over the last couple of holes. Yes. If he doesn't manage to make this one. I mean, he took on a brave shot with that second shot. And yeah, it up, was. And to end up where he ended up, it's just so unlucky. That's the breaks of this game that can change the outcome so dramatically. But you're right. Well... You think if he holds this with 18, as you say, it's an eagle opportunity. And it just gives him a glimmer of hope. Just a glimmer, though, but this has to go. It does. A wonderful effort from the young man. That's a very brave four from where he was. Well, that keeps smashed within a shot at the moment of the four aces, but they could tie it here. Chase Kepka for birdie, not quite. So Chase will finish on the par three, 13th, not the easiest hole out here. Phil's high flies in third place. That was to round off a round of 66 for Phil, six on the par today. He may yet be tasting champagne on the podium here at Rich Harvest Farms. that one as if he expected it to turn a little more it was a better pace Sergio and I on the third tee go 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 <laughs> you know that that ball has been listening to him over the last couple of holes hasn't it the escalating yeah. tone with each go or please yes yeah. listens the shambo And a tie for seven at six under par. Little nervy one here. Yeah, just long enough. Yeah. For Smith. of steel of Kevlar or something <laughs> and he will take a three-stroke lead into the eagleable par 5 18th Stinger have moved into a tie with the high flyers for third that's why Schwartzel and also Brandon Grace's birdie at four didn't hurt. Stinger won our inaugural team championship in London, and they are in with a good shout of a podium finish here in Chicago. Ending strongly. Now to look at the last. Off the tee, in between the trees, and then down a steep slope where the fairway squeezes in and two platforms here you hit it anywhere except left off the tee up the hill 
to a, a raised up green, a little pot bunker in front, squeezed in in the middle, flag today in the back left. All right, the individual looks to be a foregone conclusion. Uh, absent something overly dramatic at the final whole team competition is tight and now punch GC captain by Cameron Smith they they have moved in to a tie for third and he's finishing on a par five Matt Jones just finished Wade Ormsby other counting score is also finishing on a par five well the deepest rough on the golf course is off the left hand side of this fairway so that's where Cam Smith will be trying to avoid. Sit down. Ah! And avoid it, he did. Oh. Mm, wow. Well, that may complicate. We'll see how close that is. Pat Perez on the 10th. This was earlier. That would have given the four aces a two stroke lead. He would make his pass, so the lead is one, and here's DJ at 18. That is just all right. Matt Jones, his scores counted on the opening two days, and it will count again today. That was for his birdie at the second, and Punch are tied for third. Peter Uline with a fairway wood. Interesting. Out. It's ah. way right. Matters into the trees as well. Well, teammate for Smash Chase Kepka is on the tee at 13. 13. His final hole, not an easy one. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, it's a beautiful shot. shot. There'll be a chance from there. The twist continue. <laughs> this is Joaquin Neiman for Eagle out at two. And this will get Torque into a tie for that third place podium position. Big swinger from left to right. What a great oh. effort. Cameron Trigali for the high flyers is playing with Chase Kepka, oh, so he hard. can still uh, affect things here for yeah. Phil Mickelson's team. Three way mm. tie for third place as it stands. Anurban Lahiri at the fourth. From just off the front of the green, this for birdie. Glances off the right edge. Now, DJ Jerry would love to have been on the fairway here, yeah. especially with Cameron Smith. Well, it looks like he may be hard up against the tree just with some kind of a punch out. There's so much on the line right here from the team standpoint to keep mm. that four peak hope alive. And also, if he's in the fairway, give himself a legitimate chance at Eagle. Where Cam Smith is not going to have that chance. You never know, he'd take a three shot swing, which would be highly unexpected. 
Well, we know the financial aspects in the individual events are not to be sniffed at, but I wonder where Peter Uline is. Oh, you guys got to move back right like now. five metres, man. Ten metres. Way back. Way back. Way back. Meanwhile, who stays in for birdie at two to get the Stingers into clear third? Not quite. Matthew Wolf for the High Flyers has this to send them into solo third place on 17 under par. He almost got the High Flyers on the podium in Bedminster with an electrifying final round, Matthew Wolf. The first hole in one in live golf history in Boston at the par three second. This could be huge for Phil Mickelson's high flyers, but it floats past on the left hand side. If I'm not mistaken, that's 18 straight pars for Wolf today. Sergio for birdie at three to get the fireballs into a tie for third. Nail biting in the team contest. Chase Kemka for birdie to get smash level with the four aces, and that's oh. going to be agonizingly oh. short. Oh no, no, no. He tapped that in for his par. Okay, so it's 219, it's the same number to the front right. I get you guys, these guys, whoever these are. Yeah, cheers, thank you. 219, left to right, touch help, not much there. I got five, I think it's just going to come out of the screen. Mm -hmm. right? Yep, five is kind of look if I can land at like 210, 205. Yep, I'm just going to get 10 to 15 a roll and be right in the middle of the right section, I think. You like that? Uh, no, I like the five, five for sure. Oh, it's such a downhill, Lily. You're going to play for a lot of release. It's not going to go out, come up very high. Beautiful swing at it. It was just too much. Oh God, oh, back under. Well done, sir. What? One nine. Patrick Reed for birdie at four. To give the four aces a little bit of a cushion, but it's not going to drop for Patrick Reed. Meanwhile. Cameron Tringali has the opportunity here, and there are very few golfers left on the course. For the high flyers, yes! He knows it. Phil Mickelson's high flyers Miles are in away. third place. Yep. 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 Molly, Miles away, bro. No hurry at all. Good tiger, mate. Nice and aggressive. He's certainly got a clear backswing. It's just a follow through, Martin Peter, but that's not going to matter. He's got. He can get enough on it to get it to the next part of the fairway. Oh, oh. Maybe, yeah, maybe oh. 50, 60 yards short. Yeah, I see that. I thought he was tighter against that tree. Yeah, not a thing wrong with that. So, Cam Smith, gents, looks pretty set. Yeah for the individual title is it going to come down to dj against peter uline for the four races and smash for the team title huge shot here oh he gets it there but can't stop it got a lot of club on that out of that line didn't yeah it? he did Troy Mullins with Patrick Reed. Come in, Troy. Hey, Arlo. Thanks. I'm here with Patrick Reed. You were the best player on your team. How does that feel? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it feels good. Um, today could have been really low. Uh, There's a couple mistakes there, but uh, 
my short game was on uh, on point. I mean, two chip ins, one for eagle, one for birdie, and uh, you know, hit some quality golf shots to make some birdies. But uh, you know, we'll kind of wait and see what happens on that last hole to see uh, to see if we uh, go for a four peat. We talked about that this morning. You said you feel no pressure, but you've got one shot lead as a team, and they're still out playing. If your captain calls you in, do you, you think he will to play this playoff if there is one? We'll see. Um, you know, hopefully DJ just goes ahead and makes birdie and calls it a day on that last, uh, that par five, especially with the pin being back left. I mean, as long as you hit the fairway there, I mean, he's going to, especially DJ's length, I mean, you'll have seven, eight, or nine iron in the green. So uh, you'd hope he could get down three from there, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Don't count yourself out. You had a great day today. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks to Troy and Patrick Reed. Patrick, four under par today. Down to Sue Ann Heng. I am with Chase Kepka from Punch GC. Great round today. Five GC. smash GC. It's been a long day. It's been hot out here, right? <laughs> <laughs> but great round today. Five under par. I I got to you at the eighth where you doubled, and then you saw the leaderboard on the ninth. Then you birdied tenth, eleventh. What was going through your mind in that moment? Honestly, you know, I wasn't really doing much wrong all day, and I told my caddy we just gotta gotta put that eighth hole behind me. Um, I may have made a poor decision out there, but um, I showed a lot of heart out there, you know, birdie in 10, which is probably one of the harder holes today. And, uh, yeah, I'm just really, really proud of myself um, bouncing back like that. Uh, I knew our team needed it to, to try and make her run up that leaderboard and look like a couple other guys birdied as well. All right, well, great round today. I'm going to leave you to go and catch you line on yeah. the 18th. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Five under par 67 for Chase Kepka today. He's finished four strokes ahead of his brother Brooks. But let's rejoin our final trio. Last minute, mate. Drop and hit. Nice and quiet on the right, please. Thank you. AJ. 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 And all those, those guys too. Yeah. All photographers too, please. Yeah. Made just a little bit more difficult because he's on a slight downslope. Green above him. He's not going to come out on the trajectory he would like. That's uh, just fine. Didn't catch it just the way he wanted to. Two feet. Oh. Peter Uline has to beat yeah, Dustin Johnson by a shot in order to get smash into a playoff. A little bit more. Just a little bit more. That's still pretty close to his club. You're fine. That's better. That's good. Yeah, you're good. Well, if you were trying to get it up and down, Jerry, you probably wouldn't start here. No. <laughs> no. Over the back of this green. It requires something very delicate. We have the team title on the line. He's playing for a whole lot of individual money as well. Well, you would like to have thrown that just a yard shorter. Bubba DJ knows what he has to do here. Yeah, it's, he has the, uh, the ability, has the uphill chip, but, you know, with pressure, looking at the leaderboard, he knows what this means. Should just about do it for the four aces. 
That is it. Everybody else is in. That will make it official four in a row. Arlo, full paint. Lucky break, David? No, I don't think so. You know, you hit it straight. It may have been a little unlucky not to go in the hole. In fact, uh, you know, we, we saw what he did last week. Yeah, that was going softer than the one last uh, week uh, on the green to win. It was. Back to Cam Smith. This to tie his team. He's obviously going to win the event. And and a little side note, his biggest paycheck of the entire year, and it's been a pretty special year. Yes, it has. But he makes this, his team ties for a podium, and that means some serious bragging rights when they're drinking that uh, Leishman lager later on. enough for punch to take third they're in a tie 17 under with high flyers yeah that's all official they do tie for third there is a tiebreaker for the podium picture position but not for the payout <laughs> uh, i think i could you know i could bypass the picture <laughs> <laughs> The four aces, four peaks. DJ couldn't quite get it done on the final day in the individual competition, but the four aces in the home of the dynasty, the Chicago Bulls, one of the great dynasties in sports history. They were six time champions. It's a four peak for the four aces, but that was the massive moment for Cam Smith. winner in Chicago by three shots over Dustin Johnson and Peter Uli. Don Boulay. Cam, you came close in Boston to win so early in your live career. And judging by the reaction, this is a big moment for you. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I, think I had to prove to probably myself and, and some other people that I'm still a great player. You know, I'm still out here to win golf tournaments and I'm um, proud of how I hung in there today. Didn't really have my best stuff, I think, uh, the first eight or nine holes, but uh, stuck it tough and made a few good putts uh, coming in. It was nice. Do you think you and Dustin, you, the two dominant forces here, could create a rivalry here? It would be great for live golf. It would be great for the sport. Yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, he's probably the one on, on the group of players here that you look at and um, you think he's going to be pretty close to the lead, uh, top of the leaderboard every week. So, um you know, I hope he thinks the same about me, and uh, hopefully we can keep this going. Your dad's here, your girlfriend's here. I think your team tied for third. How many Leishman lagers can you fit into this trophy? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm going to find out, that's for sure. Um, I, I knew that putt there on the last man lot for the team, and um, it was nice to drain that one. Well, enjoy yourself tonight. Well Thanks. done. Thanks, mate.
Baba, over to you. Hey, DJ. <laughs> Good luck, Bubba. Yeah, exactly. Hey, <laughs> so four team tournaments in a row. How does that feel? Well, it feels good. Obviously, this one was really close coming down to the wire. Obviously, I knew uh, we, me and um, we were one up on Pete's team, so I needed to tie him or beat him on this hole. So, but, yeah, we both made nice up and downs here on the last hole. But, but yeah, it feels great, obviously, to get another team win. Obviously, a little disappointed in the way I played today but and yesterday. Um, you know, just hit a lot of good putts. Just nothing would go in the hole. Man, that's awesome, though. In Chicago, four Pete, pretty good, man. Yeah, feel good, guys, man. I tell you what, Cameron Smith and Dustin Johnson are going to get very well acquainted with each other over the next few weeks, it seems. They are yeah. the two dominant players at the moment at Live Golf. They're electrifying all of us, all golf fans around the world as well. How impressed were you with Cameron Smith to start with? Well, well he was fabulous, and, and as he said, he didn't have his best stuff, but he kept time and time again making those putts that mattered. And uh, I don't know, I mean, you can't make them all, Jerry, but apparently he can <laughs> yeah. absolutely quite a gift like turning on your mic yeah. but what impressed me the most is what he said at the end he said I felt like I had something to prove the guy won yeah. the players which uh, up until next year had the best field in all of golf year in and year out he won the open championship and he came into here into a live golf uh, and felt like he had something to prove. That means a lot to him and I think that means a lot to live golf. Yeah. But also the subplot he was aware of that put Oh, yeah. For Team Punch, who, yes, for the photographs, are going to be on the podium, but they tied it with poor old Phil isn't going to get on the podium again, is he, unfortunately, <laughs> for the high flyers. But that is the subplot. That's the beauty of what we're doing here at Live Golf, isn't it? And Cam Smith knew it and recognized it and drained it. Yeah, and a lot of nice stories. Peter Uline was a nice story coming away to it. And Chase Kepka, who's played in the shadow of his bigger brother, you know, for uh, a few years now. It was great to see him play so well. Absolutely. No playoff unfortunately no yeah. playoff uh, yeah. mystic fair team missed out this time but not yeah. by much let's take a look at cam smith's highlights on this final day where he shot a 69 this was for birdie at two for the captain of punch golf club the champion at st andrews nine weeks ago today in the 150th open championship this was for his birdie at the seventh And next for birdie at eight. And he was just never caught. This is a third shot at the 11th. Beautifully done. Then this was a big par putt at 13. No mistakes made there. And then a second shot at 17. He was looking to close out his first victory at Live Golf. Moments later, he would make his birdie at 17. And finally, the winning putt to take the title by three strokes, but also to get a tie for third for his team, Punch Golf Club. So, a thrilling weekend. Let's bring in the rest of our team throughout the course here at Rich Harvest Farms. And we'll talk about Cam Smith. Dom, you've been watching him for most of the tournament this weekend. What have you made of his performance? Well... The guy's short game is sublime. He, he can't get in trouble. He can short side himself. He can look like he's in trouble, but the wedge and the putter just bails him out of trouble all the time. And judging by that reaction we saw on the 18th green, when he hold that putt with his caddy, Sam Pinfold, I mean, they reacted very strongly. This one meant a lot to him. Inter Interesting you said that, Dom, because I spoke to Matt Jones and he said, you know, Cam's been playing so good during the practice rounds. His ball striking is amazing, but also his short game is just on point. So his entire game is just really, really good right now. So no surprises that he's going to raise that trophy this evening. Exactly. He's just so hard. He's going to be really hard to beat out here. His cadence, everything about him is just so steady. But I did tell him on Thursday after the Pro-Am that when we were doing that little putting demonstration that he was just going to be so on the balls of his feet, ready and rolling it in. 
it's awesome to see. Well, guys, let's take a look at the team leaderboard as it finished. How close was that? The four aces. Four Pete here in Chicago by a stroke over smash and then high flyers and punch tie for third place, a stroke ahead of the Stinger team. Troy Mullins, you've been following the team competition as closely as we have. What did you make of the excitement here on the final day? I have to tell you, I think everyone forgot about the individual play and was just so into the team today. I have to say, I admit, me myself, I just I couldn't watch, stop watching the leaderboard. I slightly wanted some other team to give, you know, the four aces a little bit of a run for their money, but you know, they took it again. Amazing to see. Well, Smash did, Suan, didn't they? And you were following Chase Kepka for part of the round, at least. I was just going to say, I think Smash performance is by far the highlight of my day. Chase really turning up, just playing great golf. And then Uline pulling it together and coming back on the back nine to deliver for the, uh, the team. So good on you, Smash. <laughs> Dom, you like a bit of team golf, don't you? Do you know, when I'm out on the course, obviously I'm focusing on the three guys I'm following, I'm doing my yardages, it's hard to follow, but I'm listening to you guys, and obviously the fluctuating nature of team golf, when you've got three scores counting, shots can change, three or four shots can change in one hole, and it's fantastic, but one thing I'm going to say, those leaderboards out there, I'm trying to look at the team leaderboard, but they change so quickly, it's hard to follow. <laughs> tell me I'm going to ask it, tell the organizers yeah. maybe to slow them down a little bit. Oh, my goodness, I've, I've got a headache. But uh, it's incredible, the atmosphere. I can't believe how much it's cleared out. There were maybe 10,000 people around here. There's maybe 50 people left here now. They must be all going to the, to the concert. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Don Belay, Sue Ann Heng, Troy Mullins, thanks very much indeed. We'll see you again in Bangkok in a couple of weeks' time. <sighs> Final thoughts, gentlemen. It's another day when you, you walk out of here, you, your head is full of stats and facts, leaderboards have changed, but again, the underarching uh, feeling is that we've been thoroughly entertained over three days. Yeah, and it, it's been another great venue, Rich Harvest Farms. You know, nine under par leads after round one, 13 under wins. Jerry, I mean, that's a pretty good test of golf. I, I have no hobbies in life. I watch golf on TV, <laughs> maybe a little bit of NASCAR. That's about it. So I get to the joy of being here and being able to help call the action. I'd be watching it anyway, and I found myself cheering. I never cheer when I'm watching golf. I found myself yeah. clapping in here for guys. You were punching the and air I at one stage. absolutely stage. wore out this ThinkPad that needs a new mouse because it's a state-of-the-art scoring system. To keep track, which I thought would be impossible of all the different changes in the team competition, was able to do it, and it was really cool to watch. And, and you know what's going to be fascinating? We started in London, of course, and we've had four consecutive tournaments on U.S. soil, but now we go to Asia. We go to Bangkok, we go to mm. Thailand, and it could all change there. That's going to be a fantastic experience for everybody, not least the players themselves. Let's remind ourselves here of the winning moment, and it was big for Punch as well. But Cam Smith is our champion in Chicago. What an addition he has been to live golf. A great character. Greg Norman, his fellow Australian, enjoyed that. So did his girlfriend, his dad, Des, is here as well. What a summer, what a year so far for Cam Smith. Currently the world number three. He takes the title here by three strokes over Dustin Johnson and Peter Uline. Well, I'm off for a long night in a dark room to recover from the excitement here on Championship Sunday in Chicago. We will do it all again in two weeks' time. We head to Bangkok in Thailand for episode six of Live Golf. Cam Smith is our champion. Thanks for joining us wherever you are around the world. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks for joining us.